Find rest as you listen to this peaceful bedtime story. For more Bible stories that bring you refreshing sleep, download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Good evening, I'm James. Tonight's meditation of faith-filled life is written to usher you into deep, restful sleep as you dwell on the life of faith into which you have been called by God. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, is filled with stories of people who have lived lives of faith. It tells of the things they trusted God for, even when they could not see a way through themselves. That same faith and that same faithful good God is available to you. All you need to do is grasp it and then rest in it. So as we begin, settle into your bed and take a slow, deep breath. Feel your heart rate begin to slow. Relax your neck muscles and your shoulders. Clench and unclench your fists. Keep breathing slowly and deeply. Then as you exhale, release the worries and burdens that you have carried with you today. Now is the time to let God renew your strength. Let me pray for you. Dear faithful Father, I thank you for your care for each one of us. As your precious child sinks into deep sleep tonight, cover them in the assurance of your love and your presence. If they wake during the night, let your whispers of love cause them to drift quickly back to sleep. Remind them that you are always with them and that you will never leave them. Let them be confident in their faith, no matter how small, because you are big. Even a mustard seed of faith can do great things because that faith is in you. Hold them closely in your arms tonight, Lord for they are your precious child. It's in your holy name that I pray. Amen. Imagine walking into a room where there are hundreds of people all sitting on chairs. They're laughing and talking. Some are even singing a song of praise to God. There are lots of chairs still left. They are humble-looking chairs, but obviously comfortable as they are very much like the ones everyone else is sitting in. There are slight differences. Maybe in the shade of the wood or the height of the legs, but they are all fundamentally the same. They are sound. They are reliable. They can be trusted to hold up the one sitting in them. As you look around, wondering what chair you should choose, you notice some really elaborate looking chairs. Some look like thrones. They are softly cushioned and decorated all over with glittering gold and gemstones. Your eyes are glued to them. That's the kind of chair you want. It's very flashy. It must be very comfortable. In fact, you're pretty sure you've heard about others who have sat in this kind of chair. You're sure it's the kind of chair that will hold you firmly for years to come. Something you can really trust. And so you head to one. It's actually up on a high dais, so you have to climb some steps to get to it. Once you climb the steps, and boy, there were more than you initially noticed, you have to input a code into a keypad on a gate that surrounds the chair. You hadn't really noticed that gate before. It takes you a while to figure out what the code is. Nobody has told you the secret. But man, you really want to sit in that chair. Finally, you figure it out and the gate opens. Then you notice that you have to carefully walk over some stepping stones crossing a turbulent river to actually reach the dais. It didn't look this hard from down below, but you're determined to get there. So you carefully tread across the stones. Finally, you reach the chair. You sit, anticipating the comfort of the seat. But to your utter dismay, it completely collapses. 
dumping you on the ground. Chagrined, you look up to see Jesus standing before you and reaching for your hand with a smile on his face. When you reach out to take his hand, you understand. The grandeur of what you put your faith in didn't matter. The fanciest chair won't hold you if it's not strong. It's not the amount of faith you have that matters. It's what you put your faith in that does. And so you let Jesus lead you to one of the humble, rough-hewn chairs. You join the throngs of people who came in the room before you. They appear confident and happy, fitting comfortably into the chairs they have been in for many, many years. They never wear out. They never let them down. They hold them firmly through all that they do. No analogy is perfect, of course. Our God is bigger than a chair. But the truth is still applicable. You can have the largest amount of belief ever that something unreliable will hold you up or the smallest amount of faith in the God of the universe, and that grain of faith in the Almighty God will make all the difference. As you continue breathing deeply and slowly, listen to the words of Hebrews 11 from the New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. And even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner, living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise, and so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died, still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, 
was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going, because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorsteps so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days, and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put the whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning, some were sawed in half, and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All of these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. Ordinary people serving an extraordinary God. It's not the size of your faith that matters. It's the one you put your faith in. The one who created the world and holds it all together. The one who loves you unconditionally. Let his Holy Spirit fill you with all the faith that you need to live a life pleasing to God because heaven awaits us. We know there is something better coming, and trusting God with today is just a foretaste of the faith that will be rewarded when we receive eternal life. Let me pray over you. Lord Jesus, shine the light of your love over your beloved child tonight. Let them bask in the glow of your glory as they sleep peacefully. 
trusting in your watch care over them. May their dreams be about you and the people who have embodied faith from the Bible. May they wake refreshed, ready to trust you in the big and the small, because you care about them both. We love you and we worship you. It's all because of Jesus. Amen. Before we begin our journey to the reservoir, take a moment and prepare yourself for sleep. Turn off your lights and find a comfortable position in bed. Adjust your shoulders, moving them gently as you nestle in. Make sure you are cozy and comfortable, allowing your mind to fully rest as you go to sleep tonight. Consider any distractions that might be pressing for your attention as your day comes to a close. Ask God to help you set those aside, knowing that He is sovereign over all. As you sleep, trust that God is in control, and anything fighting for your attention can be dealt with tomorrow. Remember the comforting words of Psalm 121, verses 3 through 5. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. Rest confidently, knowing that the God of Israel is watching over you too. Dearest Heavenly Father, our God of hope and peace, I come to you tonight on behalf of your child, this child whom you love and in whom you are well pleased. I ask that you would bless them tonight as they rest. Bless their mind as they lie down to sleep, granting them the gift of a peaceful, undistracted mind. God, I know that there are likely many things fighting for their attention, taking their affection and devotion away from you, and discouraging them as they grow weary. But I know they desire to walk with you and to follow your leading. Would you strengthen them in this desire? Help them to see that you are at work in their life. Remind them that hope is a promise, and that through faith and confidence that you are working in their life, they can find strength and renewal. Remind them of the promise of Isaiah 40, verses 30 and 31. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. You're standing on a path that runs alongside the Ford building. This English Gothic style building looks more like a chateau. It was built over a hundred years ago, made possible by the generosity of its namesake, Henry Ford. A reflection pool sits perfectly in the courtyard of the Ford building. You walk closer where you see the old multicolored stone reflected in the serenely still water. The deep blue of the sky is reflected too, along with clouds that look more like piles of cotton candy. You walk all the way up to the reflection pool, crouching down to dip your fingers into the cool water and you are surprised at how shallow the reflection pool actually is. The chateau-style stone building forms a U-shape with the reflecting pool in the courtyard space. The building itself varies from one floor to two and even three and four floors at various points. There are arches in nearly every window and down the open hallway on the short side of the building. The arches are painted white, 
as is the mortar holding the stone securely in place. And the arches stand out crisply against the dark stone. You pause for a moment to imagine the thousands of students who have walked these halls and sat in this courtyard over the past 12 decades. The stories that have been told, the time spent, how much purpose and use has been found in these spaces. As you walk away from the Ford building, you decide it is time to head up Lavender Mountain on your journey to the reservoir. Lavender Mountain is located three miles up from the main campus where you began exploring. You are lucky to catch a ride on a golf cart that serves as a shuttle offered by a staff member who helps keep the grounds of the campus pristine for travelers like yourself. The kind elderly gentleman who drives you up points out little paths along the three mile stretch sharing his own stories from the decades he has spent caring for these woods. When you reach the end of the three-mile drive, he drops you off at a lodge, just before he drives away to return to his groundskeeping work. He invites you to make yourself at home in the lodge, welcoming you to hot coffee or a cool glass of water, if either suits your desire. The hospitality is a hallmark of the generous Southern culture. You offer a smile of thanksgiving, and he drives away. You can't help but first take a few moments to admire the stunning architecture of the mountain campus. It is as beautiful as the buildings you first explored, yet different in nearly every way. You learn these buildings were built to reflect the architecture of a French manor, the buildings are tall, all brick, and neatly painted white. The brownish-orange roofs are steeply angled. They are regal and yet simple. You learn that these buildings were built for and long used as a dairy farm. And you imagine the glory of cattle, enjoying the vastness of this lovely mountain. It reminds you of another psalm. In chapter 50, verses 10 and 11, where the psalmist, writing from the perspective of your majestic God, writes, For all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains, and all the animals of the field are mine. One of the first things you see at the start of the trail is an old mill. It sits atop a stream where water still flows. You notice a brass sign with an inscription and walk closer to read more about this surprising structure tucked up the mountain. From the sign, you learn that this old mill was constructed in 1930 and was used to produce cornmeal for the people who lived on the mountain. The iron hub in the center of the wooden wheel was a gift to the miller and was moved to this spot under the direction of Henry Ford. The mill itself is boasted as one of the largest in the world with a diameter of 42 feet. You admire the stone structure built to support it, along with the little stone house-like space built right next to it, where you imagine much of the work was done during its years of operation. There is one more thing of note on the sign, indicating its purpose and history, and you learn that the water flowing in the stream you stand next to is water from a reservoir. You pause for a moment, recognizing the value of all that is stored up in the reservoir, and you ask God to give you a heart that stores his faithfulness the same way. God, we give you glory for your goodness and your unending kindness. Help us to see more of you. Help us to store up hope to draw on in times of need. You follow a trail that leads you up toward the reservoir. You pause briefly to give thanks to God for a beautiful day. 
The sun is shining brightly in the sky, and the warmth feels comforting on your cheeks and shoulders. It is a welcome dichotomy to the cool, consistent autumn breeze. The path begins with a steady incline and soon begins to curve. You follow the curve and find yourself quickly tucked away on the lovely mountain trail. Your favorite part of fall is now in full view. The changing leaves are vibrant and varied. While you noticed some degree of color at the bottom of the mountain, now you see it covering the trail of trees. You notice several types of oaks, large, looming, and dense. They fill the forest with different shades of orange and bright reds. And there is your favorite, the yellowing elm that looks like sunshine falling as the breeze claims dozens of leaves and drags them to the ground. You see the copper color of the changing pine needles and the steadiness of the evergreen creating the backdrop causing the contrast you find so delightful in the leaves that change. As you walk, you delight in the fact that there is beauty in change. While you don't always like change in your own life, you remember now, as you admire the changing leaves, that God has a purpose in every season, even here, even now. You consider the ways that change has brought trials and uncertainty. You continue your hike on the lovely trail, experiencing the peace and beauty of birds chirping and leaves rustling beneath your feet. You continue admiring the leaves and take time to appreciate the variety of shades you have seen. Shades of orange, yellow, and red found as you journeyed on the trail. Although from a distance, the colors seem to be the same. Up close, when you pick up fallen leaves from the ground and compare them to others you have kept along the walk, you see it clearly. They are different, nuanced, ever-changing even when falling from the very same tree. The path seems to be curving again, and with this curve you see a break in the trees. You feel a spring of hope inside you that, perhaps, this curve is the last on the path to the reservoir. As you come around the corner, it's clear. You have made it to your journey's destination. You stand in admiration as you gaze upon the reservoir. It is just as beautiful as you imagined it would be. The reservoir is vast covering 55 acres of Lavender Mountain, holding millions and millions of gallons of water. As you stand from your spot on the trail, looking out over the reservoir, you find it hard to conceive such an incredible amount. You consider how, for over 100 years, this reservoir has provided water for the many who live on the mountain. You consider how it has sustained life and provided renewal, how it has offered security and nourished plants and animals. This vast collection of water has been filled and refilled over and over, and without fail, it has been drawn upon for nourishment and sustenance. Once again, you imagine what your life would be like if stored within you was a reservoir of hope. You consider how you could offer faith and confidence and trust in God to those who were down and in need of strength. You could offer it to yourself, too. Looking to God in times of need to find endurance that sustained you through trying times. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Picture the reservoir of hope that God is deepening in your life. 
He has always provided for you in the past. And imagine how these experiences can fill your reservoir with confidence that God will be faithful again. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for being a God of hope. In a broken world where there is so much that needs to be made right, we look to you in hope, believing that you are still at work to renew and restore all things. Please help this precious listener to keep their focus on you, not just when things are going their way, but when times are hard. Help them to trust in you, their gracious God. Thank you for the gift of sleep. Help them to rest well tonight, that tomorrow they may rise and live their life to bring you praise. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Look to God for hope in times of trouble. Lean on Him when the challenges of life are overwhelming. Store up experiences of His faithfulness like a reservoir, and your hope will never run dry. Abide in Christ. Instead of your mind being filled with anxiety, you will be encouraged to think about the things that are true and lovely, honorable and pure, excellent and worthy of praise. Let God speak to your heart as you hear His word. So settle deeply into your bed. Let your head rest heavily on your pillow as you relax every muscle in your body. Take a deep, slow breath. Hold it for a moment and then release it, feeling the tension of your day fade away. Feel the comfort of your warm covers, the peacefulness of this moment. Don't let in any distractions. Tell them to go away. This is your time to be with the Lord as He guides you into deep sleep without worry or concern. Keep breathing deeply and slowly as you listen, letting your body ease into sleep. Father God, I bring this child of yours before you today and ask you for your favor. I already know that you love them deeply, and I ask that you would give them that assurance as well. I pray that as they sleep, their dreams would be of those things that are honorable and lovely and worthy of praise. Keep away all distractions, concerns, and stresses so that they can rest peacefully. May the sound of my voice telling them of the wonders of you and your world lull them quickly into sleep that lasts the whole night through and is refreshing and rejuvenating. I ask these things knowing that your desire is for them to live abundantly in you. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Your purpose on this earth is to enjoy God and to serve Him forever, to dwell on His excellent greatness, to fill your mind and heart with His Word. Anything else you are given to do will be fueled by these things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 in the Amplified Bible says, Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Your time tonight will be spent letting your mind dwell on these things. First, here are some things that are true, told by the scriptures. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. 
And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. All things, that's a promise. God will work all things together for good. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just. That's who God is. If He says He will do something, you can be sure that He will do it. If you have confessed your sins, you are cleansed from all unrighteousness. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. O oh, beloved, rest in that truth. He loves you so much. Lord God, your word is trustworthy. Let this precious child dwell on these things as they sleep tonight. Write them on their heart. Bind your truths to them so they live and breathe them day in and day out. Let them hear only words of truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Now let those things that are honorable dwell in your mind. Let's turn to the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew chapter 5 to see behavior that is honorable to God. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Let these honorable things dwell in your thoughts. Jesus, you don't ask us to do anything that you don't then enable us to do. So as this child of yours thinks about doing honorable things, Help them to know that they are not doing them alone in their own strength, but by the power and might of your Holy Spirit dwelling within them. And we will thank you and praise you for that power. In your name, amen. Let your mind dwell on that which is just. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 18. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow, and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. And chapter 32, verse 4 of that same book, The Rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. God is a God of justice. It is in His very nature to be just. Let your mind dwell 
on these things. Lord God, thank you for your justice that we can always know that you will do the right thing, whether we see it today or years from today. We can trust that you will follow through on your word. Help this child of yours tonight as they dwell on your justice. Give them hope and courage in the name of Jesus. Amen. Think about those things that are pure. Psalm 12, verse 6 is a perfect place to start. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. Let the words of God fill your dreams as you hear Him speak to you. His words are pure. Psalm 19, verse 8. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. When the temple of God was being built, Everything was to be made of those things that were pure. There were to be no impurities in the temple. Now you are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Dwell on the Lord and keep your heart pure. Holy Lord, there is nothing pure aside from you. So I pray that his beloved child listening tonight will guard their heart from all impurities as they dwell on your word that is true, just, and pure. Thank you for promising them your strength. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Here is what God considers lovely, that you should dwell on it. Psalm 84, verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7 How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news who announces peace and brings good news of happiness who announces salvation and says to Zion your God reigns Maybe you've thought about the fact that the feet of those who bring the news of Jesus are lovely but they are Dwell on those messengers, on those who proclaim the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the Savior of the world. And those who would speak about you to others are lovely to dwell on. I pray that this precious one listening tonight will be one who has the lovely feet of a messenger of your gospel. Grant them peace as they dwell on the loveliness of your dwelling and the telling of the good news in your name. Amen. In the New Testament, the early church fathers were directed to appoint people who had good reputations. They were devoted to the Lord and to their families. They were ones who were worthy of being looked up to. They would fulfill their duties in the church well. Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 9 through 10 describes a widow who could be given help by the church. It says, Let a widow be enrolled if she is not less than 60 years of age having been the wife of one husband and having a reputation for good works. If she has brought up children, has shown hospitality, has washed the feet of the saints, has cared for the afflicted, and has devoted herself to every good work, let your mind dwell on what it's like to know a person such as this, loves to serve others, is hospitable, cares for the afflicted, 
Let the peace such a person brings envelop your heart. Father, we praise you for your gifts that allow us to serve others and to serve you. I ask your blessing on this beloved child as they sleep tonight. That you would bring to their mind that which is of good repute, that they would dwell on that and not on those who do not honor you. It's all for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Here is what is excellent and should fill your thoughts. Psalm 150, verse 2. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Titus chapter 3, verse 8. The saying is trustworthy. And I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old, as the covenant he mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises. Excellent greatness, excellent works, a more excellent covenant. Think upon these things. Dear Heavenly Father, there is so much excellence in your name, in your character, in your mighty works. Help this loved one tonight to dwell on the excellent greatness of your name and the excellent ministry of our Lord Jesus as they rest in you tonight. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And now we will close with the words of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 11 through 13, which tells us why the Lord Jesus above all else, is worthy of praise. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and in the sea, and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen and amen. Sleep in peace, dear one, dwelling on the things of God. Do you feel restless? Do you feel unsettled? Are you longing for peace? Tonight, you will hear words from the Apostle Paul that beckon your heart to find peace, rest, and comfort. You will be reminded that Christ has made a way for you to find everlasting peace. You will be invited to rest in that peace tonight as you sleep. As you lay down, find a comfortable position. No matter what this day held, it has come to a close, and God invites you to release it and enter into the blessed rest that he gives his beloved as you sleep. Let your shoulders relax. With your eyes closed, release any pressure that's tensing you up and prepare to sleep. Take a slow, deep breath, holding it for a moment before exhaling slowly. Take another deep breath. Let the pressures, weights, and uncertainties that you are worried about fall away tonight. Your Heavenly Father invites you to rest as you sleep. Father God, 
Thank you for protecting your child through another day. As they lay down to sleep, I ask that you would lead them to the peace and rest that comes from knowing you and being in your presence. Be near to your child tonight, Jesus. Let the words that come from your holy scriptures lead them to sleep in peace and wake in joy. We look to you for our hope. You are our everlasting peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Children have the most wonderful imagination. When they play, their whole world transforms. To them, any item or location can morph in an instant, simply because the child's mind decided it was time to have an adventure. Maybe the days of careless play seem miles away from where you currently find yourself. Often, children will play castle with kings and queens or maybe even a court jester. Their backyard transforms, and with all the power of a monarch, they rule over an imaginary world. Maybe you wish you could go back to the days where the only thing you had to worry about was having enough time to play creatively in this way. It can be easy sometimes to wish that life were as simple as it was back then, when you could just imagine something and suddenly the world around you changed. Things are surely different now, but maybe the invitation remains to imagine and see the world around you change. What if God's invitation to you through his word was even more profound than your wildest childlike imagination that you could find something more than a temporary whimsical escape from the world around you and find a more lasting mindset change in his letters to the colossian church the apostle paul writes let the peace of christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the word of christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms hymns and songs from the spirit singing to god with gratitude in your hearts let the peace of christ rule in your hearts Imagine approaching the most majestic castle. You have seen it from a distance, but finally you have the opportunity to experience whatever might be inside. You slowly walk up to the gate, only to find the guards have been expecting you. They open the massive brass gate and you walk through. You're no longer on a normal sidewalk. The ground beneath you has changed to an intricate brick design. Feel the freedom of acceptance as you walk toward the front doors. Notice the array of flowers and the perfectly manicured bushes. Lean in to smell the roses. Admire the variety of blues, yellows, whites, and reds filling the flower bed. Walk closer to the front door, preparing to enter and finally see what's inside. As you reach the door, you encounter more guards, but they too seem to be expecting you. Notice the ornate design of the front doors, taller than any you've seen before. Open the door and walk through to find a still more majestic entry. Look up to see the height of the ceilings. Notice the extravagance of the staircases, one to the right and one to the left. You've entered a place with a monarch, a king or queen that rules over the space and all the space outside of it. But the ruler isn't what you imagined. It isn't a person. It's peace. Let the peace of Christ 
rule in your hearts for peace to rule means that peace leads the conversation peace initiates peace responds peace makes the decisions peace has the final word Christ gives you the invitation to surrender to peace lay down your anger and let peace rule let go of your bitterness and let peace rule stop striving and let peace rule you belong in a palace of peace and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another the invitation of Jesus is not simply to let peace have the final say it is through thankfulness to let the word of Christ dwell among you richly letting peace have the final say changes what happens in the palace of your life letting the word of Christ dwell among you is to fill the room with truth tellers and promise keepers to dwell is to remain to live to stay in a space run to the richness of the word of Christ and you will find balm for your weary soul you will find truth flowing from the heart of God you will find the promises of Jesus spoken of old and preserved for us in the Holy Scriptures though we long for the goodness of God most spaces are filled not with truth or truth tellers instead of letting outside lesser voices have the loudest voice let the word of Christ dwell in you richly wander deeper into the palace turn the corner to find another majestic great room admire the colors woven into the rug deep greens gold and soft reds smell the incense burning permeating every room look at the curtains perfectly hung and pulled back to the side draw closer to the window and look outside at the luscious green grass and the bright blue sky imagine you turn the corner and find a grand piano positioned perfectly in the great room listen as the words of Christ that dwell among you turn to songs of blessing sung throughout the palace let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through Psalms hymns and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts walk back to the front room and wander up the stairs listen to the sound of your feet on the tile as you ascend the stairs wander into each and every room you find each more elaborate than the last imagine you have filled these rooms with truth tellers truth dwelling among you peace reigning around you truth to guide you peace to sustain you this is the invitation of Christ let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms hymns and songs from the spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts we are all longing for peace we are looking for it in so many different places desperate to see this peace reign over our families workplaces relationships and the world we are longing for the truth of the word of Christ to dwell among us the beauty is found in the promise given to you as you walk with Jesus choose to lean on the peace that comes from him 
as you fall asleep tonight, and as you wake in the morning to begin a new day. Choose peace. Remember the message of Jesus and let that dwell in your mind and heart instead. Heavenly Father, I ask again that your peace would permeate tonight as your beloved sleeps. You are our hope of peace in a broken and hurting world, and we look to you. Bless your child tonight. May your message dwell richly in them, leading them to delight and rest in your promises. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Find peace tonight as you rest in the loving arms of the God who delights to bless you, care for you, and lead you. Sleep well tonight, and may you wake to know the Lord's love for you deeper and deeper. Feel yourself sinking into your mattress, your head heavy on the pillow your body loosening with each breath. The tension in your neck slips away, your shoulders ease. Your hands hang loose at your side, open and soft. With your next breath, your back releases further into the cool of your sheets, and you let your mind wander. Away from the stresses of the day, and into a place you know about but have never been. A long time ago, when there was no sin in the world, but only beauty and freedom and closeness with God. Fear, shame, regret weren't even words yet, as they'd never been experienced. Imagine a life so tranquil and untroubled, Let's allow our internal artistry to envision such a place, to feel the serenity, smell the earthiness, and hear only nature. Let me pray for you before we begin. Loving Creator, thank you for this child of yours listening to my voice tonight. Give them sweet, rejuvenating rest. Help them to see you more clearly, to love you more deeply, and to follow you all the days of their life. Thank you for making them the unique and special person that they are. May they always know that you love them. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Now, let's begin tonight's story. They call me Adam. Well, he calls me Adam, the God of the universe and my creator. When I woke up that initial day, my first sense was something on my nose. I halfway opened my eyes to see a small winged creature at the tip of it. It instantly flew off. I eased myself up and looked around. Plants of all shapes and colors enveloped me. Trees towered overhead, with streams of sunlight filtering through, illuminating the leaves. A brook bubbled nearby. Insects hummed, and birds called in the distance. A flutter of brilliant colors flew past me. I stood up from the soft sand and looked around at the cacophony of hues and breathed in a thousand smells. The sweetness of purple flowers, the earthiness of a wooded forest, the tanginess of orange fruit dangling from a nearby branch. Adam came a voice. It was both startling and familiar at the same time. I knew this being, and I knew he was the one who had made me. I knew he knew me, as though he was inside and outside of me at the same time. His voice was powerful, yet comforting, like I could wrap myself up in it and fall into a deep slumber. He asked me to take a walk with him, 
I couldn't see him as I could all these other things, but his presence was just as real. He walked down paths through buzzing foliage down to a silted, sandy beach. My feet imprinted into the dampened shoreline and the waves chased after them, covering them with cool water and then racing back into itself. I relished the feeling. The coolness, the freshness, the peace. The smell of salt intermingled with sandalwood and coconut. My creator showed me what I could eat and what I couldn't. I bit into a fleshy fruit and the sweetness and juiciness filled my mouth. A yellow globe lit up the sky, emanating brilliance and reflecting itself on the waters. Luminescent particles frolicked over the surface, mesmerizing me. I splashed my hand in the waves, noticing the strength of my fingers, the muscles of my forearm, the resilient skin covering it all. I picked up a handful of wet sand, squeezing it so it dripped into a tiny pillar. My hands could move in so many ways turning and twisting, gripping and wagging. Another object of colorful feathers brushed past me, tickling my cheek with its wingtip. What is that, God? I felt his smile when he told me that what it was called was up to me. He told me about my job. I would be naming all the animals, whatever I wanted. But there were so many everywhere I looked. I watched the winged creature meet up with its friends, and they easily glided into a V formation disappearing into the sky. Bird, I thought. A majestic, furry animal rubbed against my leg, its kind eyes surrounded by a great mane of long, silky hair. A lion, I determined. Out in the water, Shiny gray sea dwellers spun and played among the waves, splashing cheerfully. Dolphins, I knew. And so it went. Prickly, stodgy creatures became porcupines. A swimming being of fluttering, radiant fins became an angelfish. A chattering, energetic critter swung along branches, deftly traveling from one treetop to the other, was named monkey. I noticed the colorful winged creature that had landed on my nose that morning. A butterfly, I decided. My assigned task gave me a lot of work to do. Thousands of creatures of all different shapes and sizes. Some with long noses or tusks. Some four-legged, two-legged, or one-hundred-legged. Many ran so fast I could never keep up. Some hopped at remarkable speed, and others seemed to mostly sleep, hardly moving at all. But every afternoon, I'd meet with God in the center of the garden. In the cool of the day, we'd walk and talk. He'd tell me who he was and tell me who I was. With every word, a love built inside me, filling me, as though it would explode in the best of ways. For many sunrises and sunsets, I'd walk through canyons, climb mountains, balance along the edge of streams, finding animals and noticing the ones finding me, giving them each a name, telling them who they are, just as the Creator told me who I am. And as I named them, I noticed something. Not a single one was alone. There was always another with it. One gorilla would pick insects off another's back. One wolf would bring a snack to its partner. One bird would gift a twig to the other. They'd stick close, speaking to each other in the language only they knew. The world was in pairs. On my next walk with the Creator, he mentioned this. I just waded into the river and sat on some rocks, while a waterfall poured over my head. 
splaying my hair against my back and dripping down my legs. Droplets glistened on the boulder I sat on, sparkling like iridescent pebbles. It is not good for man to be alone, he told me. I will make a helper suitable for you. I fell into a deep, dreamless sleep that night, my head resting on the fluffy back of my cheetah friend, my body cushioned in the softest of moss. The sweet song of birds calling to each other woke me the next morning. I turned and saw her. She was watching me. It took my breath away. Another being like me, with supple brown skin, two legs, two arms, standing upright, with ten fingers and ten toes, just as I had. Her long hair fell to her waist like tendrils of a vine, and her eyes, they weren't like any eyes on any of the animals. They smiled even when her face didn't. Their beauty reflected her very soul. I was looking into a reflection of myself, like I'd seen in the still pond, the same but different, softer and brighter and smoother. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man, I told her. I named her Eve. I reached out my hand to her. Our fingers interlocked perfectly. We fit. We spoke the same language. And now, as the Creator had shown me the garden, I exuberantly presented it all to my partner. I pointed out all the miracles to Eve, towering pink and orange rock pillars, the clouds that drifted overhead, and how they morphed into different shapes. I introduced her to the animals, berries that dripped juice into our hands, briefly staining them purple. And she pointed out things to me, the stunning details I had never noticed, a spider web illuminated in droplets of dew, the way the sun created long shadows as it started its descent. I saw more of how God had made us different. She loved the flowers, she'd collect them. And when I found new and interesting ones, I gathered them for her as well. She often carried bundles of the spiky orange and purple bird of paradise, surrounded by curly, berry-colored silosias and dew-dripping hydrangeas. She'd squeal, sing the dainty, bell-shaped lily of the valley and the pure white peace lilies. A violet-colored plumeria was always tucked into the waves of her hair. She recognized every bursting bloom by its unique aroma, the earthiness of the sweetbriar and the opulent gardenias that she described as what the morning smells like. And of course, we spent time with the Creator. Now we'd go on our walks together, the three of us. Eve had so many questions, things I'd never thought about. She overflowed with curiosity. Why so many animals? Where did the sun go? How far away were the stars? Did birds fly at night? What did the rhinoceroses use their tusks for? What was in dirt and why did the plants need it? Sometimes he'd patiently answer her. Other times we'd just feel his warm smile over us, as though there were many mysteries that we weren't yet to know. She was enamored with the Creator, amazed by his goodness and wisdom warmed by his love for us. I didn't know the Creator could care about both of us so much. It's as though his affection simply kept growing and expanding. It had been magical exploring the garden on my own, but even more so alongside my partner, as though the adventure and excitement and peace were multiplied many times over. Within a cove of trees, near the waterfall we'd frolicked in, we rested at the end of the day, in our own human nest of soft grasses and velvety mosses. We called our good nights and gratitudes to the Creator, 
and I felt my body sinking gently into the earth, my arms around Eve, feeling her warmth, her breath, her being. Tomorrow would be another adventure. Father, fill your child with peace as they lie down tonight. Fill their mind with things of you, the beauty you create, the love you lavish on us, the delight you have in designing our personalities. Give your beloved dreams of hope and light. Allow them to feel your presence as they rest tonight. Remind them that when you created them, you said, this is good, and you still believe that. Help your child to wake up renewed and restored, and with a desire to walk with you and know you even deeper. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. May you now rest as Adam and Eve did in the garden, without a care or concern, with full knowledge that you are deeply loved and enjoyed, knowing God created a magnificent playground as the stage of your life, filled with incomprehensible beauty for you to enjoy and grow and thrive. Fill your lungs with the air that he gave you and allow him to lift every weight, every worry from your body and mind and drift off into dreams of that first garden. James was the leader of the Messianic Church in Jerusalem, meaning the congregation was filled with Jewish people who followed Jesus as Messiah. This letter was written to all of Jesus' followers, calling them to become truly wise by loving God and others. James explains that we tend to favor people who can help us, and we neglect those who are in need. This is the opposite of the love of Jesus and shows that our faith is dead. We are broken people who condemn our brothers and with the same mouth offer praise to God. We judge others and don't tell the truth. How we speak about others opens a window to what is in our hearts. God's kingdom is a place where there should be no divisions. We are to live with patience and hope for Jesus' return to set all things right and be inspired to live a life full of faith-filled prayer. Life's trials produce endurance and help to restore us from our brokenness into wholeness. When we choose to trust God, we view our trials through a new perspective. The book of James gives us wisdom about how to live a life devoted to God. When we speak with love, serve the poor, and trust that God gives us new life, we can fulfill the law of loving God and others. James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Wisdom is the ability to see our trials through a new perspective. God will generously give this wisdom to those who ask in faith, without doubting. When we recognize our brokenness before God, we are forced to choose between the anxiety of that reality and trusting in God alone. Let's choose to trust God now. As you settle your body into bed, settle your mind on the generosity of God. Let your whole body relax giving every ache and broken part of you over to Him now. Allow Him to restore you to wholeness. Align your body and mind to His Word now in faith. Open your heart to all God has for you tonight. Breathe deeply, centering on His generosity. Dear Generous Father, your word says that all we have to do is ask for wisdom, and you will give it to us. 
so we come before you now and ask for your wisdom we set aside any doubt and trust fully in your power and generosity now on our own we are broken but you long to restore this child tonight make them whole fully in alignment with you take their burdens and replace them with a new perspective that the trials of this life are working to make us perfect God I pray that the truth in these scriptures would speak to this child tonight let your spirit of generosity grow within them so that it would flow out into the world around them continue to make them more like Jesus loving God and loving others it's in Jesus name that I pray amen James chapter 1 James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations greetings consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything if any of you lacks wisdom you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you but when you ask you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wild flower before the Sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed in the same way the rich will fade away even while they go about their business blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him when tempted no one should say God is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed then after desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown gives birth to death don't be deceived my dear brothers and sisters every good and perfect gift from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of all he created my dear brothers and sisters take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard but doing it they will be blessed in what they do those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look at orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world James chapter 2 my brothers and sisters believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism 
Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there, or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that, and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. James chapter 3 Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, 
and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. James chapter 4 What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means in many against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why Scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Now listen, you will say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, If it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone, then, knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. James chapter 5 Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted, and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one. 
who was not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Generous God, I offer this prayer in faith. Just like these scriptures instruct, let this prayer over your child be powerful and effective. I ask for wisdom for this child now that the words in the book of James would bring fresh insight into how to be fully devoted to you. Continue to guide them in their journey, through trials and toward being more like your son, Jesus. I ask in faith that they would become truly wise by loving God and others, like you have called them to do. Bless this child as they sleep tonight. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. We know we lack your wisdom, Lord. So we ask you now for wisdom. You are generous. You do not condemn us, God but you freely give to us what we ask. Help us to be truly wise, to love fully. We do love you, God. Help us to love others more. As we continue to abide in Christ, as you know, getting a good night's sleep makes all the difference in your mental, physical, and emotional health. Sleep is crucial for processing the day's activities and restoring your tired body. If you've tried everything to fall asleep but still struggle, there is a quick two-minute technique that might be life-changing for you. This technique can help you fall asleep any time of the day or night, even in noisy environments. So, let this bedtime meditation lead you into peaceful slumber all within God's presence. Take a few moments to declutter your mind by releasing all pressing thoughts to the Lord. Invite the Holy Spirit to be with you. 
go ahead and whisper your prayer of invitation now. Make sure there are no distracting lights in the room and get comfortable. Tonight, we will focus on this gentle technique, one that's been around for decades, to help you regulate your breathing, relax every muscle, and visualize a peaceful place, all within the presence of God. Now, pull the soft covers around you and sink your head into the pillow. It's time to hear from the scriptures and learn this two-minute technique to help you fall asleep quickly and gently. But first, let's pray. Lord Jesus, you know how I've struggled to fall asleep. Night after night, I toss and turn, longing for deep and peaceful rest. Tonight, I come before you in the stillness of this room and ask for your blessing of sleep. Lord, I surrender all my fears. I release all my worries. I seek your presence right here, right now. Thank you, Lord, for leading me to this sleep meditation, a bedtime meditation filled with your truth and your comfort. I ask that you help me fall asleep quickly and gently. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Now, focus your mind on total relaxation. Feel a sense of calm come over you. As you allow every muscle to loosen. Starting with the muscles in your face, relax your forehead and your jaw. Moving down to your shoulders, gently roll them back, releasing the strain and tension. Let your arms rest at your side. Continue to breathe deeply, inhaling slowly and exhaling. Feel your chest relax as your breathing becomes steady. Experience a sense of ease and tranquility as relaxation moves throughout your entire body, your legs, your calves, your feet. In your mind's eye, picture the most serene place in the world. Maybe it's a quiet, sandy beach with warm, gentle waves washing over your feet. Wherever your place of serenity leads you, remain there for several moments. Sense the presence of God with you. As the prophet Isaiah writes, With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you. Let your heart's desire be the holy presence of God. By your spirit within you, seek him now. Thank you. 
Again, release all tension from your forehead and jaw. Open your mouth slowly. Then close it. Feel all the muscles in your face completely relax. Your shoulders are loose and your arms are resting comfortably at your side. Breathe slowly, steadily. As you inhale and exhale, be comforted as the Lord keeps you in perfect peace because you have fixed your mind on him. Visualize the Lord building a refuge of peace and security around you tonight. Brick by brick, he lays the foundation, a foundation that will never be moved. As Psalm 61, verse 3 through 5 says, For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. For the first time in a long time, you are able to rest deeply, knowing you are sheltered in the refuge of God. Your whole body is relaxed. Your breathing is soft and steady. And your mind is resting on the Lord your strong tower as the Lord surrounds you with his fortress of protection you are completely at ease finally you are able to fall asleep quickly and gently As you enter those first stages of sleep, drifting off peacefully, feeling perfectly content, your mind drifts to images of God's beautiful creation. Green rolling hills, a wide open meadow dotted with flowers, a gentle flowing stream of water, clear and refreshing soft grass beneath your feet cushioning your toes you remain here in the peace of God's creation inhaling and exhaling in your dream you look up to see wispy clouds floating over the quiet meadow you are lulled by the heavenly scene above you your focus is only on the creator of heaven and earth nothing troubles you as you allow the billowy clouds to pass by against the pale blue sky O 
Lord, we have waited for you. The desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you. With my soul, I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me, I will seek you early. God loves you, dear one. As you have waited for him, he waits for you. In this quiet meditation, this holy moment, God is with you. His Holy Spirit helps you relax every muscle, every tendon. He causes you to breathe in a steady rhythm. He allows you to find peace in the presence of His holiness. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing this child how to fall asleep quickly and gently. You are their helper and their comforter. We praise you from the depth of our souls. We dream of pleasant places with you, hand in hand, step by step. With you, we want to remain. Thank you for your presence tonight. Father, let your angels surround this beloved child. Surround their home and guard that which they've committed to you. Be with them through every breath every minute and every hour of the night in jesus name amen sleep deeply in christ jesus your fortress your shield and your strong tower Tonight, you will be lulled to sleep while experiencing the glory of God in the heavens and knowing that the words of God are just, all his ways are pure, all his judgments are righteous. His words are to be desired more than gold, and they are sweeter than honey. Everyone has seen the sky spreads over our heads in both daytime and nighttime you don't hear it speak it doesn't have words yet the glory of God is proclaimed in its very existence the Word of God on the other hand often speaks loudly and clearly in our hearts and minds we hear it preached we listen to it read and Psalm 19 reminds us that every word of it is true and can be trusted as you ready yourself for sleep tonight settle into your bed in your most comfortable position let your muscles relax as you begin taking deep steadying breaths pay attention to the sensations in your body 
and release the tension you feel in your feet in your legs in your back in your shoulders in your neck as you continue to breathe deeply and slowly repeat these words silently may my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you O Lord my rock and my Redeemer let all the cares of the day melt away as you rest release the pressure as you trust the Lord with what concerns you keep your breathing slow and steady let me pray for you God you are our rock and our Redeemer our firm foundation thank you for being with this child of yours as they sleep tonight thank you for reminding them that you are mighty yet gentle everywhere at once yet close by their side may the picture of this psalm comfort them and relax them tonight so that they might enjoy a peaceful and restful sleep it's in Jesus name that I pray amen imagine that it is dawn and you are up early enjoying a freshly brewed cup of coffee it's deep roasted scent filling your nose the steam warming your face you sit at your kitchen table and gaze out the window at the pinkening sky all is still in your home and your heart is at peace a few wispy clouds stroll by carrying the colors of the rising sun like cotton candy held by a child early birds flit across the expanse searching for a small pool of water in which to take their morning bath there are still a few stars visible in the brightening sky and a thin crescent moon still glows dimly but the awakening sun will soon overcome its light as you ready yourself for your day you take for granted that the sun will make its way across the sky it's not something you have to think about every day it makes its course across the expanse by the time the rest of your household has risen the colors of the sunrise have faded and the golden glow warming the morning air has ascended beyond the tops of the trees whose strong branches stretch like arms toward the warmth the rest of your morning is spent indoors working at your job or going to school or taking care of your family being in the place God has given you you glance occasionally out the window seeing the changing shadows the gathering and disturbing of the clouds perhaps your cat has followed a sunbeam in your house from window to window and you envy its carefree life or you see kids playing in the park across from your office running and chasing a ball in the bright green grass their caregiver watching and calling encouragement of their play when midday rolls up to your door you step outside to greet it again taking for granted that you will see the sun at its peak in the bright blue sky you sit for a few moments in the bright sunshine closing your eyes and turning your face to feel the full warmth a gentle breeze with a hint of the coolness to come ruffles your hair a quick shadow darts past as a small cloud momentarily scuttles by you linger for a time 
but duty calls and you head back inside still feeling the sun's warmth like a hug as you go high noon races toward dusk as your day dwindles and your journey home begins with the sun descending toward the western horizon the wispy clouds have returned and now they carry the orange magenta and purple strains of the setting sun the sight is magnificent you never tire of seeing its beauty the rays spreading out the splendor across the sky soon stars begin to pop out of the deepening blue constellations become barely discernible planets glow brightly the air cools as the sun disappears below the horizon sinking quickly hiding its face until it starts its journey again in the morning throughout the day you have been told the story of God's majesty simply by watching the sky the heavens are telling the glory of God they are a marvelous display of his craftsmanship day and night they keep on telling about God without a sound or word silent in the skies their message reaches out to all the world the Sun lives in the heavens where God placed it and moves out across the skies as radiant as a bridegroom going to his wedding or as joyous as an athlete looking forward to a race The sun crosses the heavens from end to end, and nothing can hide from its heat. Inside your house, where it's warm and comfortable, you sit in a rose-colored armchair, take off your shoes, and settle in to spend some time alone. On the sturdy brown table beside you sits your Bible its soft leather cover worn by years of use next to it is a pile of work you brought home that you could get some extra money for if you completed it tonight the thought is tempting and then you think about that carton of ice cream just sitting there in your freezer its sweetness entices you The thought of that icy goodness causes your taste buds to burst in anticipation. And then you glance again at your Bible. You remember how the words it contains have fed your soul time and time again. Verses burst into your mind like the taste buds had in your mouth. Psalm chapter 27 verse 13. I believe that I shall look upon the Lord in the land of the living. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Psalm chapter 48, verse 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth, Mount Zion, and the far north, the city of the great king. Your heart quickens as the Spirit of God brings these words to your mind. Psalm chapter 42, verse 1. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come 
nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we still were sinners, Christ died for us. On and on, the life giving words of God fill you up. You forget about the extra work beside you. You forget about the ice cream in the freezer. In your hand is all you need. His promises are true, His words are life giving. God's laws are perfect, they protect us, make us wise and give us joy and light. God's laws are pure, eternal, just. They are more desirable than gold. They are sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb. For they warn us away from harm and give success to those who obey them. Your eyes close with contentment. Your worries are in God's hands. Your heart is at peace. As you end your day with the Lord, you open your heart to His gaze. You want every part of you to be seen, cleansed and available to Him. You want every thought and every action to be pleasing to Him. But how can I ever know what sins are lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults and keep me from deliberate wrongs. Help me to stop doing them. Only then can I be free of guilt and innocent of some great crime. May my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Heavenly Father, I pray for this child of yours tonight as they sleep. May your watchful eye be ever upon them in love and grace. Tomorrow, may they experience the awesomeness of your glory whenever they look at the sky. If they wake before the dawn, let them see your glory in the sunrise. As they go about their day, may they see your wonders in the sun and the clouds. In the evening, may the sunset remind them of your love and great compassion. And may the stars speak silently to them of your majesty and your intimacy. For you know them each by name. As they sleep, give them peaceful, satisfying dreams. And when they are awake, may your holy, trustworthy words be ever in their thoughts. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In tonight's story, In the Quiet Place, we will feel the benefits of deep rest and darkness as we see how God created nature to enjoy times of hibernation and dormancy, how covers of snow keep seeds warm so they can germinate. Maybe you have a hard time turning off the lights, quieting your mind, letting go of the things that still need to be finished. Accepting the gift and the goodness of rest. Tonight, we're going to meditate on all the new life offered by God in the dark. Quiet moments when we finally surrender and accept. Even embrace the rest he gives us. In John 12, 24, Jesus says, Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, 
it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. When we experience the dormancy, it may feel like death. But you will see tonight how God is at work, even in the darkness. He has a plan even in the midst of winter to bring new life. Before we begin our story, make sure you're comfortable. Adjust the lights or the blankets if you need to. And let's take just a few minutes for a progressive muscle relaxation to get your body ready to sleep. We're going to tense muscle groups one at a time, holding the tension for about five seconds, then exhaling and letting that muscle group fully relax for 10 seconds before moving on to the next muscle group. Research has shown that this technique offers a range of benefits, including pain relief and better sleep. It may also reduce migraines and systolic blood pressure. Begin by lifting your toes upward, tensing your muscles, hold. Then release. Now, pull your toes downward. Hold. Then release. Next, tense your calf muscles. Hold. then release. Move your knees toward each other. Hold. Then release. Squeeze your thigh muscles. Hold. Then release. Clench your hands. Hold. Then release. Tense your arms. Hold. Then release. Squeeze your buttocks. Hold. Then release. Contract your abdominal muscles. Hold. Then release. Inhale and tighten your chest. Hold. Then exhale and release. Raise your shoulders to your ears. Hold. Then release.
purse your lips together. Hold. Then release. Open your mouth wide. Hold. Then release. Close your eyes tightly. Hold. Then release. Lift your eyebrows. Hold. Then release. Let your whole body relax, warm and loose, as you rest in safety. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. Now is the time to rest. Let yourself fall into a deep sleep confident that more is happening in quiet stillness than we can understand. Be like plants and animals in the middle of a long winter, waiting, resting, storing up strength, gestating new life. Be like a seed in the dark earth, resting until its time comes. Let me pray for you as we begin. Heavenly Father, we're coming to you now, grateful for the gift of rest, grateful that you've called us to trust you and that you are abundantly trustworthy. Right now, we're giving over to your control all the things that are still busying our minds, the things left on our to-do lists, the worries about things we can't control, the anxious thoughts that want to keep us up, we're giving them all to you. We're believing that you will watch over us and all that concerns us while we rest. Thank you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Speaking of his death, Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Listen again, this time in the message translation. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. Times of darkness and quiet, moments when all life and activity seems to have ended, these are the moments when life can truly begin. Jesus himself is our model. As you settle under your blankets, picture yourself like a seed in the dark earth, still, quiet, dormant, carrying life within you resting until it's called forth. Let your breath grow deep and easy as you settle in here. Breathing in, God, we are grateful for the dark. And exhaling, even as we anticipate the light. Inhaling, God, we are grateful for the dark. And exhaling, even as we anticipate the light. Let's take a walk through a winter landscape and imagine what's happening underground. Winter can seem long. The landscape is muted, covered in blankets of white snow. It crunches underfoot. 
Trees barren of leaves stretch toward the sky. The landscape feels emptier than usual, spacious. At the edge of the forest, you see evergreens as well as bare-branched deciduous trees. The sun is already low. In winter, the days are short while the nights stretch on. God created seasons. God is in these quiet, dark times. And we can learn about our own lives from watching the rhythms of the earth. Maybe one of the lessons winter has for us is a reminder that new life is always preceded by a season that seems quiet. That darkness itself is rich with life. That resting is required for all of us, from the trees to the turtles, the gardens to the woodland creatures, if we are to endure. God, thank you for showing us through your creation the way to rest. As your child nestles into bed now, choosing to believe that you will never sleep, but are always watching over them, Bless them with easy sleep, deep rest, sweet dreams, and restorative quiet. Ready them for new life as they trust in you to work and watch over them. Bless them as they sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. Seeds and flower bulbs rest dormant in the earth during a long winter, waiting for the right moment to emerge toward the sun. As you walk, you imagine where they might be laying, deep underground. Maybe there will be a line of daffodils or tulips emerging by the fence in a few months. At the edge of the woods, you think of the animals who live here. You find a path and enter in. Some animals also hibernate for these months. You picture a black bear. She was ravenous and busy at the end of summer, eating all the blackberries and raspberries and huckleberries she could find. She'd eat for up to eight hours a day. Not just berries, but also savory snacks like swamp thistle and jewelweed, yellow jackets and ants, hazelnuts and hickory nuts. Her body told her to keep eating, and she did. Right up until the weather changed, then, she dug herself a den beneath a fallen tree, one that fit the contours of her body, and raked grass and bark over her. Nestled safe, she closed her eyes and let her muscles relax. Her body went limp, and for months, she dreamed. Her body takes care of her as she rests. All those nuts and berries fuel her sleep, and something else, too. They fuel the life that's growing inside of her. Two cubs, growing bigger day by day. Eventually, she'll deliver them, without even waking up. For their first weeks of life, they'll live outside her body as much as they lived inside it, taking all their nourishment from her, cuddled against her warm body, until her summer stores of food have melted away. Then she'll finally wake. She'll wake hungry. She'll open her eyes and see what was born into the world while she rested. Her babies, full of life and ready to explore the fields and forests. Those fields and forests will be ready too. Buds on branches, bright green shoots coming from the ground. Early wildflowers peeking out across the meadow. Birds returning to their homes after a winter in the south, filling the air with song. All this beauty came from the darkness, from the waiting and resting. And God will grow good things in you as you rest in the darkness tonight. He will replenish your strength, restore your energy, and fill you with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control, bringing forth life even as you sleep. Let me pray for you. God, 
You arranged the seasons. You declared that some times are for resting and other times are for activity. In your wisdom, you call all these seasons good. Now is the time for sleep. Grant to your child the gift of deep, restorative rest, the kind of rest that leads to new life emerging when they wake. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sink deeply into sleep as I read Jesus' words from John one final time. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. Holy Spirit, dwell richly in this child tonight. Abide in them as they abide in you. May this child sleep in your peace tonight and rise up in the morning ready to seek you again. Thanks for listening to this Abide Sleep Story. The God of the universe is protecting you and taking care of you, like a loving shepherd watching his sheep. God will always provide for your every need. You have no reason to worry. Long ago, Jesus told his followers, Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In today's story, we'll travel 2,000 years back in time to a Judean hillside as Jesus talks to his followers about worrying and about God's providence. As you prepare for today's story, get comfortable. Let your head sink slowly into the pillow, stretch out your arms and legs, and let your muscles relax. If something's not right, then simply pause the Abide app and come back in a few moments. Finally, choose your favorite background music on the app. If you fall asleep during the story, that's okay. The app will stop on its own. The God of peace is protecting you and providing for you. Lay your burdens before him. Rest in his promises. Join me as I pray for you. Dear Father, you are the creator of all that's good, of love, joy, and peace. But too often, God, we worry about the future. We don't have peace in our lives because we're focused on what we don't know. Too often, our eyes are not on you. Too often, we're worried and anxious. God, we lay our troubles before you now. Help us trust you. Give us peace in the middle of trials in our lives and troubles around the world. Grant this child of yours a wonderful night's sleep and dreams about your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. As you keep your eyes closed, imagine walking through the countryside of Judea in the days of Christ. It's a day far removed from our cluttered lives. There are no cell phones, no computers, no video games, no cars. It's just you and God and his creation. Oh, and a few hundred other followers of Jesus. You're one of those followers, but it doesn't seem crowded. Everyone around you is patient and happy and full of cheer. It's as if they've waited all their lives for this moment. It's as if their people have waited centuries for this time in history. No one's in a rush. No one is pushy. They're savoring every second. A mother and her young son are in front of you, laughing. The boy, he appears to be about five, turns around and gives you an innocent wave. You smile back. Near them is a short, gray-haired elderly woman. She asks the question everyone else is thinking. Is he the Messiah? 
No one answers, but you've heard enough stories about Jesus healing the sick and giving sight to the blind that you've already formed your opinion. He claims to be God's son, and you believe it. At the head of the crowd is Jesus himself, surrounded by Peter, James, and John, and the other disciples. He's led his followers to an area near the Sea of Galilee. It's a beautiful day, and you're enjoying the walk. It's warm and mostly sunny, with only a few white, wispy clouds high overhead. They're moving ever so slowly across the sky, as if they too are hanging around and watching Jesus, wanting a glimpse of the Messiah. The warm sunshine massages your skin, and a cool breeze off the Sea of Galilee ensures you don't get too hot. The breeze carries with it a dozen earthy aromas, water and dirt and freshwater fish, and even the unmistakable scent of wildflowers from the nearby shore. To your right, you spot two fishermen in a small sailboat, pulling their net up from the Sea of Galilee. They've caught perhaps a dozen fish today, and you watch as they carefully pluck each one from the webbing. Suddenly, one of the fishermen looks in your general direction and motions to his friend, who looks your way too. You quickly realize that they're not looking at you, but at Jesus. Both men rush to the back of the boat and grab their paddles. They hurriedly place them just under the surface of the water and begin rowing to shore. They're wanting to see Jesus, and if they hurry, they will. Up ahead on your path, you spot a squirrel, searching for food within the rocks. It's cleaning its face, oblivious to the crowd around it. You hear a joyful child's voice, commenting on the squirrel's bushy tail and furry ears. All of a sudden, the squirrel dashes away from you and toward the front of the crowd. Perhaps it's chasing an insect, or maybe it's just like those fishermen and it wants to see Jesus too. A few minutes have passed, and Jesus has led everyone to a hill overlooking the Sea of Galilee. It's filled with large and small boulders alike, with green grass growing everywhere else. Please, gather around, he tells the crowd. He's sitting halfway up the hill on a large flat rock, underneath a tall juniper tree. The hill is spacious enough to give everyone plenty of room. Just as important, it's quiet enough so that anyone in the crowd can hear. You find a small boulder to sit on to listen to Jesus. He's about seven long steps directly in front of you, although the twelve disciples are the closest to Jesus. Peter is sitting on a rock to your right. He's laughing and talking to Andrew, his brother. Jesus is patient as everyone continues to find a place to sit. An older woman sits down to your left in an empty spot of green grass. She appears to be in her sixties and she begins chatting. Her husband, she tells you, is a farmer. Things have been tight lately during the drought. Her brow is filled with wrinkles. She looks anxious. It hasn't rained in days, she says. I'm worried. She asks you if you think Jesus is the Messiah. You smile at her and give an approving nod. A hush quickly falls over the crowd. Jesus is speaking. Blessed are the poor in spirit, he says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, 
for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you you are the salt of the earth but if salt has lost its taste how shall its saltiness be restored it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet you are the light of the world a city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house in the same way let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven Jesus has been speaking for about 15 minutes you're struck by his calm demeanor his knowledge of scripture his love for the people above all you're struck by his wisdom he's unlike any rabbi you've seen his words seem as if they're straight from God himself your mind begins drifting as you think about Jesus role in your life a thousand questions swirl in your head if Jesus is the Messiah then what does that mean for your future what does it mean for your people is he the answer to every problem in your life is he God suddenly Jesus looks straight at you and smiles he continues preaching but you think to yourself was he reading my mind did he know what I was thinking whatever the case you continue listening no one can serve two masters Jesus says for you will hate one and love the other you will be devoted to one and despise the other you cannot serve both God and money that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing look at the birds he says pointing to a few sparrows on the tree limbs above him they don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your Heavenly Father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are can all your worries add a single moment to your life and why worry about your clothing Jesus says pointing to the valley below they don't work or make their clothing yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are and if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow he will certainly care for you why do you have so little faith so don't worry about these things saying what will we eat what will we drink what will we wear these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries today's trouble is enough for today an hour has passed Jesus has finished preaching he and his disciples are huddled together further up the hill about 20 paces from you straight ahead some of Jesus followers have walked back to their villages others though are still gathered on the hillside in groups of two or three discussing this Sermon on the Mountain the elderly woman who sat to your left is one of those who has hung around she's smiling now her demeanor has radically changed she's no longer worrying she approaches you with tears of joy and shouts the Lord will provide the Lord will take care of us she points to the western horizon a storm is building a cool wind is blowing your direction much needed rain is on the way you look up at Jesus and his followers who are also looking at the growing storm he briefly glances down at you and smiles tears of joy stream down your face as you recall Jesus words 
Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. As we transition back to the present day, let's meditate on Jesus' promise to his followers. As you relax and fall asleep, listen again to the words of Christ. I will pray for you throughout the passage. Remember, God will provide for your every need. Jesus said, Do not worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Let me pray for you. Father, your word tells us that we are more important than the birds of the air. Genesis even says we are the pinnacle of creation. That's because we are made in your image. You sent your Son to earth to die for the sins of humanity. We affirm your word. I pray for peace for this child of God as they fall asleep. Jesus said, Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Father God, we know you care for your creation. You are the master artist, the birds of the air, and the lilies of the field, and the colorful wildflowers. They're all just a small part of your masterpiece. They don't plant or harvest or store food. And yet, you take care of them. They're never worried or anxious, and yet you always provide for them. Your word tells us you already know our every need. We praise you for who you are, promise keeper and provider. We love you. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Father, we lay our burdens before you, and we thank you for everything you have given us. I ask that you will grant this child of yours a wonderful night's sleep and pleasant dreams. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Listen once again to the comforting words of Jesus, the creator of the universe and the provider of everything you need. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. 
and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. The Savior of the universe is watching over you. He's protecting you. He'll provide for your every need. You have no reason to worry. He's taken care of you in the past, and he'll take care of you in the future. You are far more important to God than the birds of the air or the lilies of the field. You are a child of the living God. Just as a loving mother or father takes care of a helpless infant, God will take care of you. Trust in his promises. Rest in his peace. Let me pray for you. Dear Father, your word tells us that when we seek your kingdom first, you will give us everything we need. Father, we are seeking your kingdom. We want to know you more. We want to abide in your presence. I ask that you will grant this precious child of yours pleasant dreams and a peaceful night's sleep. Help them to wake up refreshed, ready to serve you another day. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Tonight, we'll learn how Jesus, the Savior of the world, slowed down each day to spend time alone with God and to rest. One day during his earthly ministry, he had worked so hard for so long that he looked at his disciples and told them, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place. Then, in a beautiful, scenic spot on the sea, he enjoyed time alone with God. The Bible tells us he rested. Even Jesus needed to get away. Even Jesus needed to block off time for solitude. Jesus knew it was necessary to slow down. His mind needed rest. His body did too. If the creator of the universe needed rest, then don't you too? Sleep is one of God's great gifts. It's like a wonderful present from God that you get to open every single day. It's a gift filled with peace, with solitude, with sweet dreams, and with time alone with your creator. It's a daily reminder that you need God. It's a daily reminder that 
There's more to life than chores and work. God created sleep for our good. It refreshes and renews us. Proverbs 3 verse 24 says, You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. As you prepare for today's story, get comfortable and make sure everything around you is the way you want it to be. If you fall asleep during the story, that's great. The Abide app will turn off by itself. Take a long, relaxing breath. Inhale slowly through your nose and hand all your troubles to God. This moment is for you and Him. Now, exhale slowly through your mouth. Breathe in again through your nose. With your eyes closed, picture God's presence all around you. Jesus caring for you, like a loving shepherd caring for his sheep. God's angels are watching over you too. Then, breathe out. As you continue breathing slowly, stretch out your hands and arms and your feet and legs. Enjoy the sensation of your muscles and bones relaxing after a long, hard day. Let tension dissolve away as you focus on God. Let your head sink into your pillow. Relish the comforting sensation of your sheet or your blanket. All are gifts from a marvelous God. Take another breath, inhaling slowly through your nose and then exhaling out of your mouth. The day is over. Rejoice in your rest. Let me pray for you. Dear Father, thank you for this child of God. Thank you for blessing them. Thank you for caring for them. Thank you for showing grace and mercy to them today. Father, I ask that you will surround this child of God with your presence. Calm their anxious thoughts. Take care of their problems. You are in control, God. You are their rock and their salvation. You have a purpose and a plan for this child of yours. Thank you. Father, your word promises peace and goodness to your children. Psalm 116 verse 7 says, Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Help this child of yours feel your presence. Give them peace. Right now, Father, I ask that you will grant them rest and sweet dreams about your kingdom. Like a loving mother or father caring for a tiny baby, so too you are caring for them. They are safe in your loving arms. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. For today's story, let's take a journey to the past, to the time of Christ. It's a beautiful day in the land of Israel, with only three or four small puffy clouds drifting slowly across a beautiful blue sky. Like sailboats navigating across the Sea of Galilee, 
The sun, which has been up for a few hours, hangs in the sky high overhead, but it's not too hot. A cool breeze off the Sea of Galilee rushes across your skin and through your hair. The breeze carries with it familiar aromas that stir your spirit. Lavender and tulip flowers, along with the unmistakable fresh scent of the sea. You look to your left and marvel at a small field of flowers with an explosion of colors, purple and red and yellow, swaying and dancing in the breeze as if they're worshiping the God who created them. Off in the distance to your left, you spot a shepherd on a small but lush grassy hill, tending to his sheep. He is perhaps in his sixties. He has a gray beard and a wooden staff that towers above his head. He walks with purpose as someone who has been doing this his entire life. He softly taps the backside of a wandering sheep, ensuring it doesn't get too far from the flock. It quickly rejoins the others. There are perhaps 20 sheep in the group. They obey his every command. Their constant sounds, their bleeding, make you chuckle. The Sea of Galilee is to your right, and you're maybe a five-minute walk from the edge. You spot a medium-sized fishing boat anchored to the shore, and a group of ten or eleven men walking toward it. No, make that thirteen men. They're listening intently to the man at the front a man who walks and speaks as one with authority, but whose frequent smiles and laughs sets his audience at ease. The man has a dark-colored beard, and he's wearing a cream-colored tunic. Like everyone in his party, he's wearing sandals. You quickly realize this man is none other than Jesus himself. He's gesturing with his hands as if he's making a point about something important. One of the apostles, you think it's Peter, nods in agreement. He then motions toward the boat, and the men begin stepping into it, one by one. James and John, who are still on land, hold the boat sturdy to make sure no one falls. Listen as we continue the story, as I read God's word from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, Let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. Five minutes have passed since the disciples pushed the boat into the sea. They're far enough from land that no one will trouble them but close enough that you can still see them. Four of the men had been busy paddling the boat away from shore, but a few moments ago, Jesus motioned for them to stop and to sit down in the boat and rest. It was an amazing moment of kindness to watch a man of his stature encourage his disciples to stop working. Currently, the boat had settled on a spot on the sea with no wind. It's floating there, 
lifelessly on the water. Much like a dead tree limb that's been carried helplessly into the sea. These peaceful waters are the perfect conditions for a restful nap. And that's apparently what Jesus had in mind, too. You spot him in the back of the boat, his eyes closed and his hands collapsed behind his head in the form of a makeshift pillow. He's asleep. Five or six of the other disciples are napping, too. The rest of the disciples, the ones who are awake, are watching a bird flying high overhead, circling the waters as it hunts for its next meal. It's a bald eagle, its majestic snow-white head and snow-white tail making it indistinguishable when set against the picturesque blue sky. Suddenly, the eagle dives toward the water spreads its wings and glides through the air just above the sea, racing faster than you've ever run in your life. Within seconds, its yellow talons have reached down and secured a small silver fish in the water. For this bald eagle, dinner is ready. You look back over at the boat. Jesus is still napping. Listen again as I read Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32, this time in the Amplified Bible Translation. The apostles who had been sent out on a mission gathered together with Jesus and told him everything that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a little while. For there were many people who were continually coming and going, and they could not even find time to eat. And they went away by themselves in the boat to a secluded place. Too often we let work dominate our thoughts and actions. Jesus, though, told his disciples to find a secluded place and rest. He told his disciples to get away from the crowds, slow down, and stop working. He told his disciples not to worry. It's a pattern God established for his people in Genesis when he rested on the seventh day. It's also a pattern God established in his creation. The birds of the air rest. The animals on land rest. Even fish slow down and rest. Every day, daylight gives way to dark. Daytime turns into nighttime. And Jesus gives you permission to slow down, cast all your troubles on him, and rest in his loving care. He's giving you permission not to worry. He's telling you, let's take a break and get a little rest. He's surrounding you with his presence and granting you peace. The creator of the mountains and the seas rested. The giver of life and the savior of the world took a break from his ministry. The maker of the sun and the moon and the stars slept on a boat. Just as the shepherd on the lush, grassy hillside cares for his sheep, so too does God care for and protect you. He knows everything you need. As Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. 
for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. God provides for you and blesses you. He lets you rest in green meadows. He leads you beside peaceful streams. He renews your strength. Rest tonight in His providential care. Let's pray. Father, You are the Creator of all good things, the food we eat, the air we breathe, the friends and family we love. You also are the Creator of time and of rest and of sleep. Father, I pray that You will watch over and protect this child of God tonight. Dissolve their anxious thoughts. Let them know that You alone are guiding their lives. You alone are their source of wisdom and strength. Surround them with Your presence. Grant them peace. Bless them with sweet dreams of Your kingdom. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. As Aaron told God's people in Scripture, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you His favor and give you His peace. Good night. Tonight, we will celebrate the gift that keeps on giving. God's comforting word. While you drift off to sleep, you will explore the treasures of His good instruction for our lives today. Growing in the richness and depth of the wisdom and knowledge of Him. His word is sweeter than honey and more precious than gold. Before we begin, close your eyes. Relax your shoulders and pause the distractions. There is nothing to fear. This is your time to be with the Lord. Breathe calmly and deeply. In peace, lie down and sleep, because the Lord will give you His safety. He will protect you in His unfailing love. As you find a comfortable position and prepare for sleep, thank God for His continued protection in your life. Stretch out your muscles, beginning at the soles of your feet. Let His relaxing presence fill up to the crown of your head. Calm your heart. You are resting in God's loving arms. This is your time to dwell under His wings, beloved. You are in a good place, a beautiful place. Let me pray for you. Praised are you, O Lord. Teach us your statutes. With our lips, we declare all the rules of your mouth. Thank you for your precious, abundant word. I pray that your child will rest. I also pray that all the lists, duties, and tasks of the day will fall away. No more toil, no more busyness. Keep them in perfect peace, because their mind is steady on you. I pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. 
your son our Savior and my Lord amen now take a deep slow cleansing breath rest as you sink into your mattress pull up the covers and quiet your mind before God as we begin this story a tree of life let's wander back to serenity the place where life began the Garden of Eden let your mind drift away as you lie under a huge luxurious green tree you hear the soft roar of a river nearby the birds chirp sweetly the warm and sweet summer wind blows gently stillness and quietness at its finest as you find the utmost rest and pleasure for your soul Genesis tells us and out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life was in the midst of the garden picture yourself there in the middle of a lush graceful green garden in front of you there is a tree that has every fruit growing in it that you can imagine shiny red crisp apples round plump purple pomegranates beautiful bright yellow bananas orange tangy mandarins the fruit of this tree is like what we are to cultivate in the spirit love joy inner peace patience goodness kindness faithfulness gentleness and self-control you spend a moment gazing at this beautiful sight breathing in Abba and breathing out I belong to you breathe in God's grace breathe out your worries take a look at the bright green leaves of the tree they are greener than any gardener could cultivate in the field you recall the vivid imagery in scripture I saw the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit yielding its fruit each month the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations you take your Bible out and turn to the first Psalm you read and hold on to these precious words blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and all that he does he prospers you smile in the summer sun knowing that God takes total delight in you as you rejoice in his word your heart is so full as you continue to bask in his tangible presence while you contemplate these words you walk slowly to the flowing stream nearby the Word of God nourishes your soul and Jesus living Word causes you to be in a posture of thanks 
arriving at the small brook, you remember another promise. See how glorious a love the Father has given us? That we should be called God's children. God, I pray that throughout the night you would restore identity. That this listener would embrace the role of son or daughter, as your word so clearly says we are. Cause everything that your beloved does to prosper. I pray that as they are warm in their comfortable blankets, that you would bless them and keep them. Let them be renewed by the watering of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amid the summer heat, you gently splash some water on your face. It feels refreshing. You continue to walk in the garden after feeling restored by the stream. After going about the gorgeous green hills, you notice that the sun is slowly sinking. Then you turn and realize that God is with you in the midst of the cool of the day. He says to you, don't be afraid, child. My grace is enough for you. Even in your weakness, you are made strong by my power. Your heart is overwhelmed with joy. As Adam and Eve walked in the garden, so are you walking with him in the gentle coolness of the day. You think to yourself, Lord, I'm unworthy to be here with you. As John was worthy to untie your sandals, I'm unworthy to be next to you. He says, Calm your mind, for I am the Lord, your healer. You have nothing to fear. As you are walking with God, He continues to open your mind to understand the scriptures. He says to you, My word is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. Long life is in its right hand, and in its left are riches and honor. You continue breathing slowly and deeply as God directs you around the garden. As the sun slowly sets, you ask, how can a young person stay pure? He answers, by obeying my word, trust in me. My word will not return void. My word sets free those who are in bondage, those who are brought low. It is the very lifeblood of this garden. You look into the picturesque sunset, thinking about what God has led you through. He says to you, be still and know that I am God. I am the only one exalted in the earth. He is who he says he is. And you are overcome with deep joy. Breathe in, be still. Breathe out, and know. Friend, Here's some of these promises that God provided for Israel. If he can do it for them thousands of years ago, he can provide for you. 
for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. Beloved, rest in God's powerful word. His character shines through. His innermost thoughts are revealed in it. He will give you a future and a hope as he did to those of old. Let me pray. Praised are you, O Lord. Teach us your statutes. With our lips we declare all the rules of your mouth. Thank you for your precious, abundant word. May your beloved rest confidently in your promises. Keep them in perfect peace, because their mind is steady on you. I pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, and my Lord. Amen. Rest well, dear one. Tonight I'm going to read to you from the prophet Isaiah. When Isaiah first spoke these words, he was speaking to God's people at a particularly difficult moment. They needed hope. They were hurt and confused. They had seen their homes and their land destroyed, and they wondered if they would ever again have a safe, peaceful home, a home that would endure. In Isaiah 25 and 26, Isaiah sees a vision of cosmic peace a future in which God restores the whole world and brings his peace, his shalom, to earth. Tonight, we'll let Isaiah's peaceful vision guide us into deep, refreshing, restorative rest as we imagine what our forever home might be like. But before we begin, take a moment to get cozy, adjust the lights, stretch out, or curl up and let the day's worries or thoughts of work still to be done drift away. Get your blankets just right and let your head sink softly into your pillow. The Lord your God is with you and promises to watch over you as you sleep tonight. As you lay in comfort, take a few moments to relax each part of your body. Begin with your feet. Focus on each toe, softening and relaxing as you slow your breath. Then focus your attention on your ankles and calves, knees and thighs. Slowly, move your attention up your body, relaxing each part one at a time and breathing deeply until all your muscles are loose and warm. If you're stressed, release your stress to God. If you're worried, let those worries go. Bring your thoughts and your feelings to God, whatever they are. God can hold them. 
Breathe in God's peace and breathe out your worries. God is with you now. God is watching over you. God is preparing a place for you. A home where everything will be made right. For right now, you can lie down and sleep in peace. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your name. Your loving kindness is from generation to generation. And your mercies are new every morning. Even when things seem dark or difficult, you are with us. And you are with your child now as they rest. Thank you for the good plans you have for them. Thank you for the good plans you have for all your people. Thank you for promising new heavens and a new earth where your love will reign forever and we will all find a home that will endure. Tonight, please bless this child with the gift of sleep. Free your child from any worries, stresses, or anxieties. Calm their nerves and heart and quiet their body. And as I read these words from Isaiah 25 and 26, let the words of the prophet guide them into a deeper sense of your promise of hope and peace and a forever home. Relax. Let your breathing grow slow and steady as I read from Isaiah chapter 25. O oh Lord, I will honor and praise your name, for you are my God. You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago, and now you have accomplished them. You are a tower of refuge to the poor, O oh Lord, a tower of refuge to the needy in distress. You are a refuge from the storm and a shelter from the heat. For the oppressive acts of ruthless people are like a storm beating against a wall or like the relentless heat of the desert. But you silence the roar of foreign nations as the shade of a cloud cools relentless heat. So the boastful songs of ruthless people are stilled. God, we praise you for the glorious things you have done. You will not let oppression and injustice win the day. Instead, you bring freedom and justice for all those who trust in you. Your eye is on the sparrow. You care for the smallest and weakest among us. Be a refuge for this child tonight. Shelter them as they sleep. Bring sweet dreams and deep rest. Renew them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The prophet Isaiah continues, painting a picture of what God has prepared for those who love him. In Jerusalem, the Lord of Heaven's armies will spread a wonderful feast for all the people of the world. It will be a delicious banquet with clear, well-aged wine and choice meat. Picture yourself there, seated at God's banqueting table, surrounded by people you love, friends old and new. Lights are twinkling and candles glow. As you look up and down the table, you see people you never expected to see here. The surprise brings you joy, and you feel a smile blooming on your face at the wondrous things God has done. You see people from every nation, a clamor of happy voices speaking in musical languages. People who once were enemies are now friends. They pass bowls of food down the length of the table, and there is enough for everyone, more than enough. No one will go hungry here. No one will be cold. No one will be without a bed and a home and a place of belonging. You pick up your fork and take a bite, and you eat. And you look in amazement at all God has done. 
Isaiah tells us more about what the forever home will be like. There, God will remove the cloud of gloom, the shadow of death that hangs over the earth. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears. He will remove forever all insults and mockery against his land and people. The Lord has spoken. In that day, the people will proclaim, This is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord in whom we trusted. Let us rejoice in the salvation he brings. Mighty God, we proclaim that you are our God. You have swallowed up death forever in the work of your Son, Jesus, on the cross. We look forward to the day when you will make your home among us. Seat us at your banqueting table and feed us with your love. Even now, we have tasted and seen your goodness. We proclaim our trust in you alone. Watch over us and guide us into rest that we may have the strength we need to praise your name in the day to come. Pace your breathing as I continue reading from Isaiah 26. In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. Can you picture this city? It's perfectly safe. Not because it's surrounded by a tall wall, but because it's surrounded by God's salvation. In this city, God encircles you. You and everyone else who has sought refuge in God finds a welcoming home here. Because in God's kingdom, Salvation is free to anyone who puts their faith in Him. Anyone who asks God for deliverance will find it, will be brought into this safe city, where the oppressors cannot reach them, where violence has ended, where the shadow of death has no more power. Isaiah continues, God, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you, let me read that again. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. God, help your child now to fix their thoughts on you, to trust you, and to rest in the perfect peace that you bring. Let these words guide your breath, breathing in, you will keep me breathing out in perfect peace. Inhaling, you will keep me. And exhaling, in perfect peace. Isaiah continues, Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. He humbles the proud and brings down the arrogant city. He brings it down to the dust. The poor and oppressed trample it underfoot, and the needy walk all over it. For those who are righteous, the way is not steep and rough. You are a God who does what is right, and you smooth out the path ahead of them. Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying your laws. Our heart's desire is to glorify your name. In the night I search for you, in the morning I earnestly seek you. 
God, smooth the way for your child. Raise up the valleys and lay low the mountains. Make a level path for your child to come to you. May this child sleep in your peace tonight and rise up in the morning ready to seek you again. Sink deeply into sleep. As I read these final words from Isaiah, he says, Lord, you will grant us peace. All we have accomplished is really from you. O oh Lord, our God, others have ruled us, but you alone are the one we worship. Isaiah is confident that whatever trials we face, God is with us, and God has a plan for restoring all things to himself. God will bring peace to earth. God has brought peace to earth in Jesus, and God's peace will come again in its fullness to reign in our hearts and our lives. Our forever home will be a place where God's justice and love win the day. Let that confidence guide you into peaceful rest tonight. There is nothing you need to accomplish. God works on your behalf. God works as you rest. God never grows weary. God never forgets you. All that you have comes from God. He has made for you a home that will endure. He alone is worthy of worship. Gracious and powerful God, thank you for giving us a vision of your dream for the world, of what you have prepared for your people. We believe that you will restore all things. You will make all things new, and we eagerly await your coming in glory. We praise and exalt you for your love endures forever. Thank you for allowing us to see your work in the world. God, I ask now that you would be with your child as they sleep through this night. Give them peaceful dreams, restore their spirit, and wake them in the morning to a new day that you have made, that they may rejoice and be glad in it that they may experience your fresh mercies, that they may work to help usher your kingdom in on earth. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There is one reason we don't need to fear. God is the great I Am who is always present and never abandons us for a moment. Before we get into the joy of this truth, take a few moments to clear your mind, give your swirling thoughts a rest, and breathe in God's love and goodness. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and relax. Breathe out all the worries of the day, and breathe in the comforting presence of God's Holy Spirit. Let tension leave your body as you dwell with God, certain that He loves you and is with you now as well as through the night. Breathe in a sense of God's presence. Exhale your fears. Think about the fact that the mightiest being in the universe, the great I am will never leave you because of this you can say I am not afraid close your eyes to block out all distractions then take a deep slow breath take another if you need to so that you feel your body relaxing and your heart calming. Let your body relax from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Make sure your limbs are relaxed.
1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. What a fantastic reassurance that there is one who loves us so much that it leaves no room for fear. Let's talk to this amazing God, this great I Am, who is always in the present moment with you. Because of Him, I am not afraid. Dear Heavenly Father, the great I Am, we have no idea how much you love us. We can't comprehend perfect love because we only know human love, which can be fickle and wavering. But your love is constant and even better, not dependent on our frailty and weakness, but on your goodness and power. We ask for this love to soak deep into the bones of this child of yours so that they will have confidence that you always act for their good and your glory. And because of that, they will rest tonight in sleep. In Jesus Christ, the author of grace and peace, we pray. Amen. The Apostle John lived with Jesus for three years. He traveled with him everywhere and saw him do amazing things. He saw powerful things, such as when Jesus healed the sick, cast out demons, and raised the dead. He saw Jesus transfigured as he talked to Moses and Elijah. These were incredible, astounding things. But he also saw tender moments when Jesus knelt down and talked to children, when he gave women dignity that others in their society didn't offer them, and when he reached out to people others despised. This must have given John a whole new glimpse into who God is. It's one thing to read that God is full of loving kindness. It's another to watch Jesus live that out in a way that was greater than any love John had ever seen before. John was there when Jesus explained to Nicodemus that God loved the world so much that he gave us his one and only son. In other words, in all these things, he saw Jesus' amazing love. So it makes sense that the Apostle John said, There is no fear in love. God's love is so perfect and strong that it crowds out fear so that no room is left for the worries of life to weigh us down. The great I Am is offering you freedom. Don't go back into your prison of fear. Realize the door is wide open and that you can walk through into God's love and presence even as you nestle down to sleep you can say it aloud I am not afraid how do we know God loves us let's go back to the verses before verse 18 in the New Living Translation 1 John chapter 4 Verse 9 through 10 says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. As I read it again, Listen to how this passage defines real love. 
God showed us how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. How reassuring that the great I am, the one who always was, always is, and always will be, cared about us enough to send his son to earth for our sakes. We didn't know what we needed, but he did. He knew we needed a savior who would understand our weaknesses and be able to atone for them. Therefore, I am not afraid. And not only that, but he told us what real love is. It's not our own feeble efforts to love God, but that he loved us. And because he is the great I am, that love is always present with us and is powerful enough to overwhelm our fears so that we can rest in peace. Listen to 1 John chapter 4, verses 13 through 16, which further explains how we can count on this love. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Not only did God give us His Son, but He gave us His Spirit as well. This is part of what it means that he calls himself, I am. When John was spending those three years with Jesus, he didn't have the Holy Spirit living in him. He had Jesus' company, which was wonderful beyond belief. But when Jesus left the earth, he gave his people the Holy Spirit, meaning I am would always be with us. John must have lived in wonder at this. Let the magnitude of this soak deep into your soul. The Spirit living in you is proof that God not only loves you, but has given His watchful care of you every moment. So, you can say with confidence, I am not afraid. We not only have God living in us, but we live in God. This is astounding. 
we get to live in the great I am, the one who knows everything, sees everything, and most of all loves perfectly. The Apostle John understood this intimately and gave us great insight into who God is. In the Gospel, he wrote, John calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved throughout the narrative, defining his very identity by his relationship with Christ. The knowledge that Jesus loved him became the defining point of his life that ruled over everything and chased away his many fears. And in this passage, he doesn't merely say that God is full of love, but that God is love. In other words, the word love is defined by the great I am and is meaningless without him. So how does knowing that God loves you help you let go of your fears? It means that you know you have a safe place to land, that no matter what happens to you, I Am is surrounding you with His perfect love. Hand your biggest fear over to God right now and bask in His love for you, even as you get ready to drift into sleep. Let your soul resonate with this. I am not afraid. Listen to the end of our passage in 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 through 18. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect, so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. We can face Him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. Not only can we be free of fear in the midst of difficulty, but we are also free from any kind of fear of God. We don't have to be afraid of judgment, because Jesus has paid the price for us. We don't have to be afraid of any kind of punishment. If we are, we have not experienced His perfect love. As your eyes grow sleepy, soak up God's perfect love and really believe it. If you wake in the night and feel anxious or begin to worry about something, let I Am's love wash over you. Let the phrase, such a love has no fear, fill your mind.
It may even be helpful to take a deep breath as you say it. As you breathe in, say, such love. As you breathe out, say, has no fear. Lord, the ever-present I am, who never leaves us for a moment, help this child of yours to truly understand that you never act outside of your love. You always surround this beloved one with your care, and you will never abandon them for a moment. Keep this child of yours centered on your love so that they can experience freedom from worry, even as they sleep soundly in you tonight. Amen. This sleep meditation is written from the scriptures to help you relax and fall asleep. Please take a moment to get comfortable. Adjust the pillow, pull up the covers, and settle your mind on peace and rest. The end of a long day is here. It is time to rest from your work and responsibility. For now, your only job is to focus on peaceful sleep in the presence of the Lord. Take a deep breath in and release it slowly. Feel the tension leave your body as you relax every muscle. Inhale and exhale a few more times, releasing all lingering thoughts to the Lord. Now, Invite the Holy Spirit to be with you as you sleep. Ask him to cover you with his peace. Love, joy, and peace are part of who God is. By his spirit, he releases these fruits into your life as well. Welcome his presence to be with you and abide in the fruits of his comfort tonight. Feel the warmth of the covers and the stillness of your surroundings and close you with a sense of calm. Breathe in and let it out. Tonight, I will tell you a comforting story about the gift of God's favor. And just in case you're wondering, God's favor is the undeserved grace that he chooses to give because he loves and delights in us. So, settle your mind on the gift of God's love and delight over you. Receive his undeserved grace and know that he loves you with an everlasting love. Now, please allow me to pray over you. Good and gracious God, I pray for this listener tonight your beloved child, who is resting in your presence and seeking the gift of your favor. Thank you for being with them. Please calm their mind and rein in all the thoughts that are not of you. Cover them with the warmth of your love and help them know that they are held by you. In the name of your son, Jesus, I ask for the gift of your favor to be revealed to them as they fall asleep. Please remind them that your presence alone is a divine blessing. Help them feel safe and secure in your love and provision tonight. Thank you, good Father. It is in the name of your Son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Psalms chapter 95, verse 6, gently encourages us. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Know you are secure in the knowledge that your prayers are being heard. The unwanted trials and sufferings have been consumed through Jesus' work. In your dreams, may you see the wonders of God come to pass in your life. Psalm 
so get comfortable. Snuggle down into the covers and relax. Close your eyes and feel the day melt away. Take a deep breath and then exhale it, almost like a sigh. Feel the emptiness of your lungs before taking another breath in and out. Reflect on where your knees and feet are and relax them, removing the tensions of the day. Think of them kneeling at the foot of the cross with no fear or anxious thoughts, safe and secure in the Savior's presence as you pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this promise that every knee will bow. I think of those who don't serve you and how their knees will bow. I also think of myself and how I will be humbled before you. Lord, even now, give me peace within my soul to know that you are a just God a loving and merciful God who forgives and renews. Renew my spirit through peaceful sleep, I pray. Amen. Everyone has seen the sky. It spreads over our heads in both daytime and nighttime. You don't hear it speak. It doesn't have words. Yet the glory of God is proclaimed in its very existence. The Word of God, on the other hand, often speaks loudly and clearly in our hearts and minds. We hear it preached, we listen to it read, and Psalm 19 reminds us that every word of it is true and can be trusted. As you ready yourself for sleep tonight, settle into your bed in your most comfortable position. Let your muscles relax as you begin taking deep, steadying breaths. Pay attention to the sensations in your body and release the tension you feel in your feet, in your legs, in your back, in your shoulders, in your neck. As you continue to breathe deeply and slowly, repeat these words silently. May my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let all the cares of the day melt away as you rest. Release the pressure as you trust the Lord with what concerns you. Imagine that it is dawn and you are up early, enjoying a freshly brewed cup of coffee, its deep, roasted scent filling your nose, the steam warming your face. You sit at your kitchen table and gaze out the window at the pinkening sky. All is still in your home, and your heart is at peace. A few wispy clouds stroll by, carrying the colors of the rising sun like cotton candy held by a child. Early birds flit across the expanse, searching for a small pool of water in which to take their morning bath. There are still a few stars visible in the brightening sky and a thin crescent moon still glows dimly. But the wakening sun will soon overcome its light. As you ready yourself for your day, you take for granted that the sun will make its way across the sky. It's not something you have to think about. Every day it makes its course across the expanse. By the time the rest of your household has risen, 
the colors of the sunrise have faded and the golden glow warming the morning air has ascended beyond the tops of the trees whose strong branches stretch like arms toward the warmth the rest of your morning is spent indoors working at your job or going to school or taking care of your family being in the place God has given you you glance occasionally out the window seeing the changing shadows the gathering and disturbing of the clouds perhaps your cat has followed a sunbeam in your house from window to window and you envy its carefree life or you see kids playing in the park across from your office running and chasing a ball in the bright green grass their caregiver watching and calling encouragement of their play when midday rolls up to your door you step outside to greet it again taking for granted that you will see the sun at its peak in the bright blue sky you sit for a few moments in the bright sunshine closing your eyes and turning your face to feel the full warmth a gentle breeze with a hint of the coolness to come ruffles your hair a quick shadow darts past as a small cloud momentarily scuttles by you linger for a time but duty calls and you head back inside still feeling the sun's warmth like a hug as you go high noon races toward dusk as your day dwindles and your journey home begins with the sun descending toward the western horizon the wispy clouds have returned and now they carry the orange magenta and purple strains of the setting sun the sight is magnificent you never tire of seeing its beauty the rays spreading out the splendor across the sky soon stars begin to pop out of the deepening blue constellations become barely discernible planets glow brightly the air cools as the sun disappears below the horizon sinking quickly hiding its face until it starts its journey again in the morning throughout the day you have been told the story of God's majesty simply by watching the sky the heavens are telling the glory of God they are a marvelous display of his craftsmanship day and night they keep on telling about God without a sound or word silent in the skies their message reaches out to all the world The sun lives in the heavens where God placed it and moves out across the skies as radiant as a bridegroom going to his wedding or as joyous as an athlete looking forward to a race the sun crosses the heavens from end to end and nothing can hide from its heat inside your house where it's warm and comfortable you sit in a rose-colored armchair take off your shoes and settle in to spend some time alone on the sturdy brown table beside you sits your bible its soft leather cover worn by years of use next to it is a pile of work you brought home that you could get some extra money for if you completed it tonight the thought is tempting and then you think about that carton of ice cream just sitting there in your freezer its sweetness entices you the thought of that icy goodness causes your taste buds to burst in anticipation and then you glance again at your Bible 
You remember how the words it contains have fed your soul time and time again. Verses burst into your mind like the taste buds had in your mouth. Psalm chapter 27, verse 13. I believe that I shall look upon the Lord in the land of the living. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Psalm chapter 48, verse 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth, Mount Zion, and the far north, the city of the great king. Your heart quickens as the Spirit of God brings these words to your mind. Psalm chapter 42, verse 1. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we still were sinners, Christ died for us. On and on, the life-giving words of God fill you up. You forget about the extra work beside you. You forget about the ice cream in the freezer. In your hand is all you need. His promises are true. His words are life-giving. God's laws are perfect. They protect us, make us wise and give us joy and light. God's laws are pure, eternal, just. They are more desirable than gold. They are sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb. For they warn us away from harm and give success to those who obey them. Your eyes close with contentment. Your worries are in God's hands. Your heart is at peace. As you end your day with the Lord, you open your heart to His gaze. You want every part of you to be seen, cleansed and available to Him. You want every thought and every action to be pleasing to Him. But how can I ever know what sins are lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults and keep me from deliberate wrongs. Help me to stop doing them. Only then can I be free of guilt and innocent of some great crime. May my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Heavenly Father, I pray for this child of yours tonight as they sleep. May your watchful eye be ever upon them in love and grace. Tomorrow, may they experience the awesomeness of your glory whenever they look at the sky. If they wake before the dawn, Let them see your glory in the sunrise. As they go about their day, 
May they see your wonders in the sun and the clouds. In the evening, may the sunset remind them of your love and great compassion. And may the stars speak silently to them of your majesty and your intimacy. For you know them each by name. As they sleep, give them peaceful, satisfying dreams. And when they are awake, may your holy, trustworthy words be ever in their thoughts. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you begin to go to sleep tonight, listen peacefully to the promise that every knee shall bow before him. Psalms chapter 95 verse 6 gently encourages us. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Know you are secure in the knowledge that your prayers are being heard. The unwanted trials and sufferings have been consumed through Jesus' work. In your dreams, may you see the wonders of God come to pass in your life. So get comfortable, snuggle down into the covers, and relax. Close your eyes and feel the day melt away. Take a deep breath and then exhale it, almost like a sigh. Feel the emptiness of your lungs before taking another breath, in and out. Reflect on where your knees and feet are, and relax them, removing the tensions of the day. Think of them kneeling at the foot of the cross, with no fear or anxious thoughts, safe and secure in the Savior's presence as you pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this promise that every knee will bow. I think of those who don't serve you and how their knees will bow. I also think of myself and how I will be humbled before you. Lord, even now, give me peace within my soul to know that you are a just God, a loving and merciful God, who forgives and renews. Renew my spirit through peaceful sleep, I pray. Amen. Many people kneeled before Jesus. In Mark chapter 1, verse 40, a leper knelt before Jesus, imploring, If you will, you can. Make me clean. Leprosy was a terrible disease, not only physically, but emotionally, causing a person to be an outcast from his family and community. Imagine the scene. Jesus with a crowd of people pressing around him. The murmur of whispers as the crowd parts in fear that this poor leper might touch and infect them. But Jesus doesn't move away. The leper, in his tattered clothing, feeling his weakness and shame, showing every ounce of his desperation. His hands fall limply to the ground to support himself, and his eyes don't open as he breathes deeply. It took so much energy and faith to just approach Jesus, to break through the barriers of social norms, and to hope one more time in someone, something that could help him. If you will, you can he spoke he did not doubt jesus ability to make him clean 
but he did doubt his willingness would this man be willing does he love him enough does he consider him worthy Jesus responded by healing him physically and emotionally the next verse goes on to tell us that Jesus moved with pity he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him I will be clean Jesus is moved by our needs our humility as we kneel before him others may walk by us not noticing us not acknowledging our presence but Jesus is moved to feeling picture him stretching out his hand towards you we place ourselves before him and he stretches himself towards us he goes beyond the everyday he moves into action towards us feel the soft gentle touch of Jesus on you for this leper it was probably the first time he had been touched that someone cared enough to risk infection for a long time and then Jesus whispers I will he is not only able but he is willing he wants to use his power in our lives for our good he sees us and he wants to help and then he says those wonderful words the words we have been longing to hear be clean feel the power of forgiveness of mercy not only does he see you he wants to help you even now as you drift off to sleep he is touching you and helping you in ways you may never know thank the Lord for his willingness to touch you to heal your hurts feel the power the release flowing through you even now as you rest in the moment relaxed in your efforts receiving his grace once a mother came to Jesus and knelt before him Matthew chapter 20 verse 20 through 21 says then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons and kneeling before him she asked him for something and he said to her what do you want this is such a tender picture of a mother wanting what is best for her sons like the leper it took faith courage for her to come before Jesus and kneel she was probably not young as her sons were adults she may have even struggled to take such a prone position it showed her reverence for him and her complete faith that he could and would do what she asked picture yourself kneeling in front of Jesus knowing he has the strength to meet all your needs picture yourself kneeling in front of him wanting to ask him something but not really finding the words what if he thinks we're not worthy to ask or that it is a silly thing what if he thinks it's too big for him or even worse that he doesn't want to do it and then picture him gently saying what do you want he wanted to hear everything that was on this mother's heart he wanted her to pour out her need even if it seemed silly to others it was not to him he cares he invites her he invites you unburden your heart to him 
even as you take your next breath breathe it out to him let him know your longings and then feel your anxiety melt as he takes your burdens those unfulfilled dreams and desires he takes your burdens off your back and places them on his own he wants to know each one of them and he wants to free you from them even if they seem silly or trite he wants to know feel the weight taken off of you feel the release of tension emotionally and physically relax because it is no longer your burden but his relax your shoulders your arms your neck there is a beautiful word picture as you read further into our original psalm passage oh come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand there are so many reasons to kneel before Jesus there is desperation like the leper there is a love for others like the mother but the knowledge of who God is the character of God that also causes us to fall on our knees he is our Lord and to say it another way he is our master he has chosen us to be his sheep in his pasture being cared for without worry or stress eating his lush grass provided for thank him for calling you to himself reflect on the sweetness as he entered your life with his saving power of his forgiveness of his grace of his salvation God is also our maker as the person who created you he knows you because he formed you as his work of art he knows your heart and desires and longings he also knows your weaknesses your struggles he more than anyone else knows what you are lacking and how he can meet your needs picture in your mind an artist painting a beautiful painting of a city see colors and parts you are drawn to then look around in the painting and see the shadows and darkness that you maybe don't really like God painted you with beauty and shadows he wants to be with you even in the shadows or picture a potter forming a vase on the potter's wheel spinning around and around right now it's a shapeless blob as it goes around and around his hands firm yet gentle embrace the vase he knows its purpose he knows its possibilities as he places pressure in one location he allows it to be free in others causing it to take a unique shape he knows the color glaze he's going to put on the outside but more than anything he knows the love he has felt in forming the inside and then there is the oven the kiln where the vase is baked he knows the perfect temperature that will bake the vase without breaking it he knows how long the vase needs to bake to make it strong he is perfect and he makes things that are perfect in his eyes in the next verse the psalmist reminds us for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand we have been thinking tonight of who God is but this is a gentle reminder of who we are the sheep of his pasture he wants to care for us by providing pastures places of refreshment and rest he has provided the place you are in right now to give you rest close your eyes 
picture yourself as a sheep intent in your pasture content in having the good shepherd care for you lay yourself down and cuddle into the deep lush grass take a deep breath and listen to the stream nearby feel the coolness of the breeze as it strokes your face melt into the ground as you start to fall asleep knowing you are safe in his hands as we rest in his pasture let's talk to God let's bow our knee in submission to him and his will Lord we thank you that every knee will bow we thank you for the way you have met the needs of those in Scripture as they knelt before you and we know that you will meet our needs as we kneel before you bless this person listening as they are one of the sheep in your pasture and that you hold them in your hand Lord we need rest and sleep as only you can give we need refreshment for tomorrow a renewal of our spirit to do what you have for us to do we pray that even now we will drift off to sleep complete relaxation secure in your love and acceptance knowing that you desire to meet all our needs Lord be with us as we rest in you in the name of Jesus amen continue to breathe deeply in and out knowing that your maker knows all about your life sink deeply into the knowledge that he wants to bless you and comfort you and protect you rest in his arms This sleep meditation is written from the inspiration of the scriptures to help you relax and fall asleep. Please take a moment to settle into bed. Make yourself comfortable and take a few deep breaths to relax. Maybe it's been a long day and you're more than ready for a good night's sleep. This bedtime meditation will help you focus on the Lord and the peace that comes from his word. If anything is troubling you, anything at all, I encourage you to release it to God. Dear friend, offer your worries to him with open hands he can handle it go ahead release all your concerns to the Lord your dad who loves you now take a deep breath in and release it slowly invite the Holy Spirit to be with you ask him to fall fresh on your household your life and your heart tonight breathe in the sweet fragrance of the Lord Jesus was described as a fragrant offering in Ephesians 5 2 exhale softly and slowly now please allow me to pray over you 
Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight asking for a special blessing over this listener as they seek to find rest in your presence I ask that you help them actually feel your covering of peace like a soft quilt of comfort and warmth I pray that your peace will enclose them no matter what kind of day they've had or what concerns might be lingering in their mind about tomorrow I pray that you will calm them with your presence thank you Lord for caring so much about this beloved child thank you for leading them to listen to this sleep story and I commit this time to you trusting that your purpose will be accomplished in the heart and mind of this beloved child in the precious name of Jesus I pray amen tonight our scripture focus will be on the glorious words of praise from Psalm chapter 8 this Psalm of David might best be described as a song of God's glory displayed throughout the heavens about this chapter Charles Spurgeon once said let us go abroad and sing it beneath the starry heavens at eventide rest in that poetic phrase for a moment beneath the starry heavens at eventide inhale and exhale relax every muscle feel the tension just leave your body as you turn your thoughts to the glory of the Lord tonight in a moment you will hear the words of David as he offered a beautiful tribute to the God of all creation and to the glory of the Lord seated high above the heavens but before we visit this psalm of praise please join me as I pray Holy Father your glory rises far above the heavens so vast so boundless we just can't comprehend it yet by the works of your hands you give us glimpses into your magnificent glory and for that we're so thankful tonight Lord open our ears to hear the wonderful words of praise from the mouth of David join our hearts with yours as we meditate upon your glory for our own good help us to release all distracting thoughts and just focus only on you and your perfect word settle us Lord in the goodness of your presence and I pray these things in the beautiful name of Jesus amen and now hear the words of David O Lord our Lord how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of our enemies that you may silence the enemy and the Avenger when I look at your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him 
what is man that you are mindful of him how is it possible that the creator of the universe has time to be mindful of us surely he he has better things to think about and yet God's thoughts over us are thoughts of love and acceptance after all not only did his hands set the moon and stars in place but his hands fashioned each of us in his own likeness dear one the Lord is mindful of you tonight think about that he knows you he thinks about you he loves you let those thoughts bring you comfort and peace what is the son of man that you care for him oh how God cares for you he cares about the smallest details regarding your life feel that feel his nurturing presence watching over you as you fall asleep you are his beloved child and you are held in his loving hands there's no doubt that he is with you for the scriptures declare that he is Emmanuel God with us feel the presence of God Emmanuel with you tonight the Lord has set his glory above the heavens he has set the moon and stars in place for centuries man has tried to figure it all out they have endlessly searched for answers about the universe the heavens have been a puzzled wonder to mankind but know this God has it all figured out nothing is a puzzle to him he has put all the right pieces together in just the right way beyond our scope of understanding he designed the universe the heavens the earth and our lives for his glory and our good one 19th century astronomer once wrote what have we to tell of all the different varieties of stars what of those most supremely glorious objects what of the Milky Way such are a few of the questions which occur when we ponder on the mysteries of the heavens the mysteries of the heavens are no mystery to their Creator for he has set his glory above the heavens rest under the heavens that God has put into place as a vast covering of starlit wonder and glory Lord God please bless this beloved one who is resting in the glory of your presence tonight bless them with peace hope and trust in you settle their breathing into a soft rhythm helping them sink into a deep peaceful sleep Lord as they rest quietly I ask that you allow them to dream of the beautiful works of your hands the works of your fingers that set the moon and stars in place 
the works of your magnificent glory found high above the heavens in the name of Jesus I pray amen on each of the historical flights of the space shuttle discovery the crew was awakened each morning by song these wake-up calls were a tradition of the NASA program and the songs were selected by mission control one Sunday morning during orbit John Glenn and the rest of the crew woke up to a song called hallelujahs a song that speaks of cratered moon and sparrows wings oh thunders booms and Saturn's rings unveil our father as you sing and my soul wells up with hallelujahs the writer of the song Chris Rice was overwhelmed by the thought of his humble song being played for the astronauts in space as they hovered far above the earth with a miraculous view of God's handiwork they were filled with a song of worship to the maker of the universe and my soul wells up with hallelujahs holy God maker of all that is seen and unseen our souls well up with hallelujahs praise and honor of who you are thank you Lord for creating the heavens in such a vast array underneath the starry sky we rest in the holiness of your presence we dream of the works of your hands in all your glory and goodness amen when I look at your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place what is man that you are mindful of him in the son of man that you care for him yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor you have given him dominion over the works of your hands you have put all things under his feet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor rest humbly in the place that God has established for you a little lower than the angels and crowned with glory and honor I praise you for setting everything in its place just so perfectly underneath the blanket of the starry heavens you have assigned us our proper place tonight Lord I pray over this dear child for rest and peace in your presence I ask that your glory will continue to shine in their life for their ultimate good as the earth continues to spin on its axis and make its orbit around the Sun I pray that the life of this listener right here will continue to flow under the mighty direction of your hand thank you Lord that you are mindful of us that you care about us and that you love us in the holy name of Jesus 
Amen. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babies and infants. You have established strength. How majestic is your name, your glory above the heavens. You have established strength. Feel God's majesty and glory and strength covering you tonight. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength. Sweet praise from the mouths of babes, worshiping the one who saves. From sky above to earth below, the works of your hands we long to know. Heavens declare the strength of your glory. We long to hear of heaven's story. From first breath of all creation, through each blessed generation. How can your glory be understood? Your perfect glory for our good. Heavenly Father, Father of glory and goodness, remain over this beloved child tonight as they sleep in peace. Help them to get enough rest to feel renewed at morning light and to awaken with a sense of refreshment. Thank you, Lord, for being that constant in their life, that constant source of hope and faith. I pray for the blessing of your presence to stay with them through the night and continue as they face a new day. I pray all these things in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. God is so good. This is a guided Christian meditation from Abide to help you relax and fall asleep. If there is anything troubling your mind tonight, causing you to feel a bit of anxiety, I encourage you to let it go. Release it. Give it to the Lord. He knows all about it. The Lord is good. He hears you. And He cares about you. Take a few moments to relax your body. Feel every muscle release its tension. Breathe in and out. In and out. Get cozy under the soft covers. Remove all distractions from your mind and settle into a peaceful state of rest. In this bedtime story, we will be reminded of all the ways God is so good to us. Even when it seems like the world is anything but good, God's kindness, generosity, and faithfulness is evident to all. The imprint of His mighty hand is displayed throughout all of creation. The glory of His goodness is seen across the heavens and throughout the earth. He is a good, good Father indeed. 
but before we begin make yourself even more comfortable under your warm covers rest your head gently on your pillow get cozy and take a few deep breaths in and out allow your breathing to fall into a steady rhythm inhale exhale invite the Holy Spirit to fill the room and watch over you as you sleep whisper softly the name of Jesus allowing his peace to cover you his perfect peace steady your breathing into a gentle rhythm in and out in and out let go of all other thoughts and concerns tonight God is so good he loves you very much his goodness never fails you can always count on him breathe in and out in and out relax in the peace of God as I say a prayer over you tonight Heavenly Father please cover your beloved one as they find true rest in you please help them know that you are with them please cover them with your love and your goodness as a soft blanket envelop them in the comfort of your peace in the name of Jesus I pray amen now as I share the beautiful reminders from Scripture the reminders of God's goodness sink your head deeper into your pillow and completely relax every muscle in your body inhale and exhale it was the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts who reminded the people of Lystra that God's goodness could always be counted on he encouraged them to turn away from worthless things things that could not be counted on and turn to the Living God now Lystra was an ancient village built upon a modest hill rising from the surrounding plains of Asia Minor with the grandeur of mountains to the west and to the south this Roman colony was mentioned as the hometown of Timothy one of the young men Paul mentored in his faith Paul visited Lystra on more than one occasion preaching the gospel and healing a man who had been lame from birth on one of his visits 
Paul encouraged the believers of Lystra that even though the Lord had allowed the nations to walk in their own ways, he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. God never left them. Even through trial and hardship, the evidence of his goodness was all around them. What an encouragement. The evidence of God's goodness surrounds us as well. It is seen in the illustrations of nature. As each new day is yet another portrait of God's exquisite artistry. From blue ocean tides and sandy beaches to flowering meadows and lush green forests. God's goodness is evident to all. Be assured of God's goodness, of his presence in your life. No matter what is going on in the world, the Lord is with you every step of the way. Allow that thought to surround you with peace tonight. Breathe softly in and out. As Paul continued to encourage the believers in Lystra with the beautiful testimony of the Lord, he pointed out that it is God who sends the rain, provides good crops, and gives joyful hearts to his beloved. God sends the rain. Hear it falling gently from the clouds to water the earth, like small pebbles hitting the ground in a cadence of rhythmic wonder. Sometimes the raindrops fall so softly they can barely be heard. Other times, sheets of rain come in waves and torrents, cascading down like a waterfall from heaven. Yet, each drop fulfills its purpose, offering much needed moisture to the dry and thirsty ground. The earth drinks in the rain and silently begs for more. Let the showers of God's goodness fall gently on your soul tonight. Drink in the sweetness of his presence. Inhale and exhale. Not only does the Lord water the ground, he cultivates the earth, causing good crops to burst forth and grow as sustenance for his people. In various places, fields of grain spread out like quilts across the landscape. Some of the fields are circular, some are square, and some are shaped like pieces of a puzzle. 
each crop provides what is needed for that region as you gaze upon the fields from above you see that some are deep green like emeralds dotting the landscape these include clover parsley and fennel other crops appear like vast treasures of pure gold they sway in the wind waving their greeting to the passerby wheat corn oats and rye fields of grain sustenance good and perfect gifts from our father in heaven bask in the abundant blessings of the Lord tonight continue to breathe gently in and out in steady rhythm allowing your body to fully relax inhale and exhale as I pray over you good and gracious Lord thank you for your presence tonight you are good you are holy I thank you for this listener who has invited your spirit to cover them as they sleep please help them rest deeply in your goodness knowing that you are with them bless them Lord with peace in the precious name of your son I pray sense the soothing calming presence of the Lord tonight breathe in his goodness breathe out all your cares he is with you Paul finished his message to the people in Lystra by reminding them that God is the giver of joyful hearts allow the Holy Spirit to fill your heart with joy tonight it is his good and perfect gift to you he has joy in abundance it is a fruit that never fails to be produced in the heart that fully trusts in him oh taste and see that the Lord is good blessed is the man who trusts in him taste and see the Lord is good trust in him and be blessed you can trust in the goodness of God breathe softly in and out allow the comfort of the Holy Spirit to wash over you he gives you the deepest sense of peace not as the world gives but deeper peace than anything you've ever known in the book of Exodus we read that the Lord God is merciful and gracious long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth let those truths seek deep into your heart 
He is merciful. He is gracious. He is patient. He is full of truth. And he is so, so good. Rest in these beautiful descriptions of God tonight. As you gaze into the heavens on a starry night, there is no doubt that the glory of the Lord fills every bit of space, unwavering, unchanging. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Let that promise reassure your heart tonight. The Father of the heavenly lights does not change like shifting shadows. As the hymnist said, there is no shadow of turning with thee hear the soft melody of those words there is no shadow of turning with thee remain in the comfort of God's unfailing love stay in the presence of his spirit rest in the silence for several moments God does not change he remains steadfast and true to his word you can rely on him you can trust in his goodness For every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Slow your breathing in and out. Softly, gently, deeply. God is so good to us I am reminded of the simple chorus God is so good God is so good God is so good he's so good to me the evidence of his goodness is all around you it envelops you like a soft cloud of comfort sink deeper under the covers relax every muscle in your body inhale and exhale as I pray over you most merciful God full of grace I pray over your beloved child tonight I ask that you blanket them with peace as they rest securely in you help them settle into the deepest of sleep so that they will awaken refreshed and restored Thank you, good, good Father, for being with them tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you know how God sees you? 
you are very precious to him be encouraged and meditate on that as we wind down you are a child of God and like any parent God views you as one of the most precious things he has he loves you so much Isaiah 49 16 says behold I have engraved you on the palms of my hands your walls are continually before me you are engraved on God's hands let that thought permeate your body as you settle down to sleep relax and close your eyes take a deep breath feel different parts of your body switching off relax your toes and feet focus on your legs let tension dissolve away feel your lower back and abdominal muscles just switching off now your chest and upper back feel all the tension melt away let your shoulders arms hands and fingers relax and shut down finally your face eyes and mouth relax them and find yourself starting to drift off father thank you for being our Heavenly Father we thank you for your love and encouragement Lord let this child of yours feel your presence right now Jesus there may be times that they don't feel loved or wanted but it's in those times that they need to be reminded about what you say about them you say that they are loved you say that they are precious in your sight you say that they are yours Lord teach them to only care about what you say about them and not what other people say about them in your precious name we pray amen now imagine yourself sitting on a very busy downtown street you're blind so you can't see what's going on around you but the crowd is overwhelming your voice cannot be heard there are so many people walking on the sidewalk that you're constantly being bumped into the sounds the smells the dust the clamor every day it's the same you keep asking and begging for someone anyone to give you just a little bit of money so you can eat you hear no friendly words you feel no friendly touch in fact you can hear some talking about you unkindly maybe thinking because that you can't see you can't hear all of a sudden you hear someone shout there he is everybody immediately starts to surge toward this individual you have no idea who they're all wanting to see 
You try and ask people who is there, but no one answers you. Then you hear someone say, There's Jesus. You've heard of this man. His amazing teaching, his miracles. Oh, his miracles. The thought flits through your mind that maybe Jesus could help you. Oh, he's helped so many others. But then reality sets in and the hope drains from you you've been tossed aside so many times why would Jesus even pay any attention to you you just sit there try to listen to what's going on just then you hear someone call out to you did you hear that right did someone say your name and then and then you hear it again softer closer gentler not since your father spoke to you as a child have you heard your name said in that way so so lovingly all other noise has stopped it's as if you're in a cave no one around you moves or speaks it's Jesus you don't know how you know but you know it's Jesus and he has found you you feel his hand on your forehead you you hear his gentle voice and all of a sudden the darkness that has always enveloped you starts to grow thinner light begins to break through and your eyes begin to focus and you find yourself looking directly into Jesus's eyes and Jesus is looking directly at you and you feel more love coming from him than you have ever felt in your entire life imagine being blind your whole life and then miraculously being healed imagine being overlooked ridiculed and then suddenly loved beyond your wildest imagination out of all the others on the street that day that he could have stopped for Jesus chose you maybe you felt the way that the blind man felt that people ignore you and you feel that you're not worthy of love maybe you've been suffering with an ailment and you feel that God has forgotten you but the truth is this you are worth everything in the eyes of Jesus and he wants what is best for you listen to John 3 1 from the Amplified Bible see what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God and so we are for this reason the world does not know us because it did not know him 
God calls us his children so that we can get a glimpse an idea of what our relationship with him should be truth is there's no way we can totally grasp just how much he loves each of us it's too vast and wide it's immeasurable unchanging never-ending did you hear that never ending he will always love you we are all so precious to him Webster's dictionary defines the word precious as something of great value not to be wasted or treated carelessly that's how God views you you have value you are not to be wasted or treated carelessly maybe you feel like you've done so many wrong things in your life that God doesn't love you that couldn't be more wrong God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you perhaps you've seen the verse John 3 16 on a sign in the end zone of a football game along the side of the road on a billboard but let's take a closer look at that verse in the New Living Translation for this is how God loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life God did that for everyone meaning no matter what you've done in your life God still loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you you're precious to him Jesus loved telling stories in Luke 15 11 through 32 in the New Living Translation he tells the story of the prodigal son to demonstrate God's love for us even when you mess up and sin and don't feel worthy of God's love this story explains how God views you listen to this parable a man had two sons the younger son told his father I want my share of your estate now before you die so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons a few days later this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there he wasted all his money and wild living about the time his money ran out a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him but no one gave him anything when he finally came to his senses he said to himself at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare and here I am dying of hunger I will go home to my father and say father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son please take me on as a hired servant so 
so he returned home to his father and while he was still a long way off his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him his son said to him father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I am no longer worthy of being called your son but his father said to his servants quick bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening we must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life he was lost but now he is found so the party began meanwhile the older son was in the fields working when he returned home he heard music and dancing in the house and he asked one of the servants what was going on your brother is back he was told and your father has killed the fattened calf we are celebrating because of his safe return the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in his father came out and begged him but he replied all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do and in all that time you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes you celebrate by killing the fattened calf his father said to him look dear son you've always stayed with me and everything I have is yours we had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life he was lost but now he is found God is telling you right now that he loves you you are so precious to him no matter how much you've sinned God is still waiting for you to come back to him now sleep in confidence knowing that you are loved and are precious to God let's pray oh dear father thank you for loving us thank you for your grace and mercy I ask now that you would come and comfort your child as they sleep tonight may the Lord bless them and protect them may the Lord smile on them and be gracious to them may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace amen now rest in his loving arms tonight you will be lulled into a peaceful calming sleep with several different translations of Psalm 23 from the traditional King James Version to the fiery passion translation you will hear this beloved psalm brought to life as you prepare to fall asleep quickly to the Word of God make yourself comfortable in your bed relax your muscles take deep steadying breaths 
let the distractions flit like dragonflies through your mind without landing let the peace of Christ guard your heart and your mind so that you can rest deeply tonight Father God we are grateful for your love and your care for us I pray over this listener tonight that they would hear these words not only with their ears but with their very soul lead them beside still waters make them lie down in green pastures restore their soul guide them in paths of righteousness for your namesake in the mighty name of Jesus amen King James Version the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever ESV the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever CEB the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing he lets me rest in grassy meadows he leads me to restful waters he guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name even when I walk through the darkest valley I fear no danger because you are with me your rod and your staff they protect me you set a table for me right in front of my enemies you bathe my head in oil my cup is so full it spills over yes goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live the message God my shepherd I don't need a thing 
you have bedded me down in lush meadows you find me quiet pools to drink from true to your word you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction even when the way goes through death valley I'm not afraid when you walk at my side your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure you serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies you revive my drooping head my cup brims with blessing your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life NIV the Lord is my Shepherd I lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he refreshes my soul he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake even though I walk through the darkest valley I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever good news translation the Lord is my Shepherd I have everything I need he lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water he gives me new strength he guides me in the right paths as he has promised even if I go through the deepest darkness I will not be afraid for you are with me Lord your shepherds rod and staff protect me you prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me you welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life in your house will be my home as long as I live NLT the Lord is my Shepherd I have all that I need he lets me rest in green meadows he leads me beside peaceful streams he renews my strength he guides me along right paths bringing honor to his name even when I walk through the darkest valley I will not be afraid for you are close beside me your rod and your staff protect and comfort me you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies you honor me by anointing my head with oil my cup overflows with blessings surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever the voice the eternal is my Shepherd he cares for me always 
he provides me rest in rich green fields beside streams of refreshing water he soothes my fears he makes me whole again steering me off worn hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name even in the unending shadows of death's darkness I am not overcome by fear because you are with me in those dark moments near with your protection and guidance I am comforted you spread out a table before me provisions in the midst of attack from my enemies you care for all my needs anointing my head with soothing fragrant oil filling my cup again and again with your grace certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go always everywhere I will always be with the eternal in your house forever The Passion Translation The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, a quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me, and lead me through it all the way your authority is my strength and my peace the comfort of your love takes away my fear I'll never be lonely for you are near you become my delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then, afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Lord God, lover of your people, protector, shepherd, savior, We praise you and worship you for your goodness and your kindness. I pray over your beloved child tonight that they would rest in your presence, sleep in your arms, trust you with their whole being. May your goodness and mercy abound in them forever and ever as they abide in you in the precious name of Jesus I pray amen
Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this beloved child of yours. Thank you for another day of life, one that was full of possibilities and opportunities to see your hand at work in their life. I pray that as they sleep, you will remind them of your presence and nearness. Let this night of rest be refreshing and restorative for them. Help to rest in the promise of your word that comes from Psalm 90. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth in the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Yes, God. From everlasting to everlasting, you reign. You reign over every aspect of our lives. From the mountain highs to the valley lows. And we give you thanks. I pray that this sleep story would stir a great affection for you. And a reminder that throughout all of time, you are at work to redeem and restore bringing purpose and value to every aspect of our lives may this stir within your child a desire to give you glory and praise i give you thanks heavenly father for your goodness and graciousness in jesus name i pray Amen. Before you can explore the wonders of Machu Picchu, you must first take the journey to get there. It starts in the ancient town of Cusco, Peru. Imagine that you spent the night in a bed and breakfast, an inn or sorts. You wake up early in the morning on a beautiful spring day. You make your way out of the guest room and step outside onto the narrow cobblestone street with inns lining the entire way. After bidding your gracious host adieu, you start the journey toward the train station. As you walk toward Plaza de Armas, Cusco city center, you're captured by the bright blue sky with beautiful, plush clouds scattered all throughout the first thing you see in the distance as you approach the main square is a stunning cathedral the rusty orange of the old basilica is striking against the blue sky and stands out clearly as it's nearly three times bigger than any of the other buildings in the square the cathedral has three dark green doors. One is in the very center, more than twice as tall and twice as wide as the other two, which sit on either side of the main entrance. Atop the cathedral, you see two bell towers, one positioned in each corner. You see two bells and wonder if there might be more. You check your watch in hopes that you're nearing the top of the hour so you'll hear the bells ring before you leave. You spend a few more moments walking around the square. You pause at the ornate fountain right in the center and feel a mist of the falling water on your face and arms. It's refreshing in the warm spring sun you dig into your pocket, remembering the Peruvian soul you have from the day before, and fish out 25 centavos to toss into the fountain. It's nearing 9 o'clock in the morning, and you know it's time to make your way to the train station. As you walk to the train, you smile at the beauty of the Peruvian people. You see an older woman sitting on a bench in the square, 
weaving what looks to be a blanket. She's wearing a colorful shirt and has a straw hat shielding her face from the bright sun. Her hair is dark and long, styled in two long braids that hang over each shoulder. You make eye contact with her, and she smiles. Her kindness evident as she nods to the traveler, wandering through her beloved city center. As you walk up the steps to the train station, you hear the bells in Plaza de Armas chime nine times to indicate the changing of the hour. You have just a few minutes until your train departs, so you grab a cold drink, find your ticket, and make your way onto the train. You find your seat next to the window and settle in for the three and a half hour ride from the colorful city of Cusco to the town at the base of Machu Picchu, the town of Aguas Calientes. The train begins to move, and before you know it, you are miles outside of Cusco, riding through the majestic Andes Mountains. The route takes you through both canyons and open fields. There are moments when you can't even see the sky for the height of the mountain range, and moments where you're right along the Urubamba River, seeing the water rush over rocks as it flows down the middle of the mountain range. You pause. Take a moment to stand in awe of the beauty of these mountains, this river, the spring sky, an experience of seeing the world. You remember the words of Psalm 90 verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Before you know it, the train is arriving at the station in Aguas Calientes. You exit with the other passengers to find that just beyond the train platform is a market. There are dozens and dozens of smaller booths and tables filled with everything a traveler could desire. There is clothing woven with beautiful colors, just as you saw the woman in Plaza de Armas wearing. Bright yellows, oranges, reds, and purples, woven together into bright dresses, scarves, poncho-like pants, and more. There are backpacks and fanny packs, even large tote-like bags that could be slung over one shoulder. You walk to the next booth where you find a stunning collection of handmade artisan jewelry. There are bracelets with matching necklaces, a few trays of rings, and then what appears to be the main focus of the creator. The earrings. There must be hundreds of pairs hung neatly on carefully crafted stands. You finger a pair, admiring the emerald stone in the center, glittering in the sun that shines brightly overhead. Next, you notice a pair made out of small coins, and you recognize them as the same Peruvian soul that you've had clinking around in your pocket. You smile again at the creativity and continue your perusing. You continue walking down the narrow walkway between the two rows of booths. The concrete floor is dusty beneath your feet, 
and the spring air is cool on your skin. At another booth, you see several tables covered in neatly folded blankets. You instinctively reach out your hand, wondering if the blankets are as soft as they look. You rub your hand along the stack and are surprised by just how soft the blanket actually is. The kind shop owner smiles sweetly and in simple English tells you it's the alpaca wool that makes it so soft. You look closely at the creative patterns on each of the blankets and resolve that you'll stop by this booth again before your trip ends for a souvenir alpaca blanket. This blanket would be so nice to sleep under. You wander a little longer in the market before exiting and walking onto the streets of Aguas Calientes. The air is still cool, despite the sun shining, and you revel in the beauty of changing seasons. You are reminded that winter is over, and it won't be back for many, many months. It is no longer a season to bundle up and endure the cold, but rather a season of new life. A season to be refreshed and renewed. A season to remember that God is good, and it is He alone who sustains you through winter and brings you into spring. Remember the goodness of the God who both makes the mountains and forms the earth, including its seasons and all its wonders. As it says in Psalm 90, verse 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. As you walk the streets of Aguas Calientes, your eyes easily wander to the brightly colored buildings that line the city streets. Side by side, you see bright yellow, bright red, bright orange, and bright blue. The colors continue, alternating mostly between yellows and oranges with a few reds and blues sprinkled throughout. The bright paint gives the town a playful, inviting feel. You can't help but smile when you see them. And you notice that most of the people you pass on the street are smiling too. Although you've made it to Aguas Calientes, you know the journey is nowhere close to over. The real prize of this adventure will be in walking the grounds of Machu Picchu. But first, you have to get there. The bus that will take you further up the mountain to the site of the ancient civilization will be leaving shortly. So you take a moment to grab a bite to eat stopping in a little cafe for a pastry and a warm drink. The adventure is just beginning. The time has finally come for you to take the last leg of the journey to Machu Picchu. After various planes and trains, the last leg will be taken by bus. You easily find your way to the bus pickup location. It is easy to notice because there is already a long line of people waiting for the bus to pull up and begin loading. As you walk past dozens of people to reach the end of the line, you hear a variety of different languages being spoken. And again, you give thanks to God for his creation. After waiting just a few minutes, the charter-sized bus pulls up to the stop 
and passengers begin boarding. You make your way up the three steps and onto the bus, where you choose a seat near the front. The bus fills up, and the final leg of your journey to Machu Picchu begins. The bus ride is about 30 minutes long, taking you nine kilometers up the Switchback Mountain. You marvel at the wonder of a road carved into the side of the mountain. And remember again the God who created them. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth in the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Oh, Father, maker of the mountains, you are so good. We worship you for your majesty, for your creativity, and for the intricate way you design the world. Thank you for this gift of creation, and thank you for the ways we get to enjoy it. The bus arrives, and you make your way away from the crowd where you see your guide waiting to lead you up the steps and through the entrance gate. As you come around the corner from the entrance gate, you catch your first glimpse of Machu Picchu, and it stops you in your tracks. It is more incredible and majestic than any picture you could have attempted to convey. You stand amazed at what the ancient Incan people built hundreds of years before modern technology. The site is massive. Instead of following the crowd down into the actual site, you take the path in the other direction going up to an ancient guard gate. You follow the well-worn path and find that this indeed is the most extravagant view of Machu Picchu. It is just like the picturesque photos you have seen in magazines and postcards. You learn that the mountain that looms over the site is called Wayneu Pichu. Its presence brings majesty and prestige to the world you are currently admiring. From this view, you can see all of the nearly 200 remaining structures on the historical site. You can see the way the ancient walls slope down the steep mountain creating a miniature city built for a king. Having admired the city from above, you make your way down to walk the grassy paths that are lined between the granite stone intricately laid so long ago. Your guide leads you, explaining in detail the mastery of how the Incas built this hidden world. You marvel at the way the walls were built without any kind of mortar, the builders precisely cutting out each and every stone to ensure a perfect fit. As you consider the intricate way this civilization was designed, you think of the intricate ways in which you were designed by God. Feel the peace that comes from knowing just how deeply the God of the universe cares for you. You continue the adventure, wandering through Machu Picchu, learning its history, giggling over the roaming llamas and alpacas, and learning more about who God is and how he cares for you. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the promises found in Psalm 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth in the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. As much as we treasure seeing the glorious things your people have made on this earth, ever more do we treasure you, the God who made it all. I pray again for your beloved child as they sleep tonight. May they tangibly sense your presence. May they trust confidently in the plan you have for their life. May they believe that you are good, that your heart towards them is gentle and kind. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. This sleep story comes at a time when it feels as though the world is spinning out of control. As tensions rise and troubles increase, many of us are wondering when the Lord Jesus will return. If this describes you, please let me assure you that Jesus will return. The Bible tells us, that every eye will see and every knee will bow before the King of Kings. So even though it may seem like Jesus is tarrying, he will come again at just the right time and just the right way. You can count on it. My friend, if you are tired of all that is going on around you and you are searching for encouragement for your weary soul, you are in the right place tonight. For we will hear great words of comfort from Jesus himself in John 17. But before we hear those encouraging words from the Savior, please take a moment to get settled into bed and make yourself comfortable. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale slowly. Feel the tension leave your body as your muscles relax from head to toe. Clear your mind of all distractions. Let go of the day's events. It is time to rest. Turn your thoughts to Jesus. Invite the Savior to be with you tonight. His presence replaces all fear and anxiety. When you call on his name, there is peace. Rest in the peace of his presence now. Take another deep breath in. and release it. Heavenly Father, please surround this listener with your peace. Let the joy of your presence flow over them and through them as they fall asleep. I pray that you will clear their mind of everything that troubles them. Take it away, Lord. Remove the worry and stress. Focus their thoughts on the true home where they will spend eternity with you. 
Father, thank you for your word that reminds us we are not of this world. We need that reminder more than ever before. Fill us with the assurance that this is not all there is. Your kingdom will come and your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please fill the heart of this precious child with your peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding. I ask that you guard this person's life and the lives of their loved ones that they will rest assured that you are God. You are holy. You are just. And you are good. Now, Father, please be with us as we read the words of your Son tonight. Give us open hearts to receive your truth. For it is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. In John chapter 17, verses 11 through 16, Jesus prayed to his Father in heaven by saying, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Hear the words of Jesus again. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Rest on the truth of his words for several moments. What a comfort to know that Jesus prays to the Father on your behalf. Jesus loves you so much. He prays for you. Romans 8:34 says that Jesus was raised to life and sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Jesus intercedes for us. He is our mediator. Just as he said in John 17, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me. Jesus intercedes for us, even right now. Let that comforting thought Settle your heart and mind tonight. You, my friend, are not of this world. You have a Savior who is fully aware of what is happening around you, and He is your constant source of peace. Feel His peace surrounding you shielding you from the chaos in the world. 
nothing can steal the peace you have in Jesus in him you remain steadfast strengthened and secure in his promises trust him lean into him let all remaining traces of unrest fall away as you depend fully on him hear the sound of your own breath rising and falling steadily in the night feel the soft beating of your heart Jesus is sustaining you through it all Holy Father thank you thank you for your sustaining power to overcome the world there is nothing that can take this beloved child out of your hands you are a shield about them a mighty fortress of peace and safety thank you father for your protection in a lost and dying world we have life in you we praise you we thank you we give you all the glory in Jesus name in John 14 Jesus says my father's house has many rooms if that were not so would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you I am going there to prepare a place for you as you drift off to sleep allow your mind to imagine the place Jesus is preparing for you for all eternity you will be surrounded by holiness goodness and righteousness no more sickness no more pain no more darkness everything will be made new there will be no need for the Sun or moon for the glory of God gives it light and the lamb is its lamp the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it in the glory of God and in the light of the lamb we will live forever and ever you are not of this world all of this is temporary a vapor that will soon pass away there is no need to worry or fear the Lord is your God and he is with you he cares for you there is nothing beyond his grasp hear the words of Jesus again as he prayed I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them full measure of his joy it is the Lord's desire that you have the full measure of his joy within you even here even now especially now you can have the fullness of God's joy within you sleep peacefully in the full measure of his joy indescribable undeniable everlasting joy gracious God in the fullness of your peace and joy please lead this beloved person into glorious dreams of heaven 
give them a glimpse even the tiniest glimpse of the place you are preparing for them remind them Lord that they are not of this world all of this will be made new even though the heavens and earth will pass away your love and your presence is here to stay cover this child with your presence please Lord fill them with your indescribable grace and full measure of joy in the precious name of your son Jesus amen sleep now beloved your assurance has come with Jesus and the Father you are made one not of this world this passing place for in the blink of an eye you'll be face to face for now protected by the power of his name sleep now beloved in his joy remain as you prepare to rest tonight close your eyes and let the burdens of your day evaporate this day has come to a close and all that is left for you tonight is to simply rest in the loving arms of Christ take a slow deep breath breathe in through your nose letting your stomach fill up with air pause for a moment before slowly exhaling through your mouth take a peaceful breath as you give thanks to God for this day point your toes and wiggle your ankles move your shoulders as you settle into bed dearest Heavenly Father thank you for another day to experience your unending grace and for another night to rest in the peace of your Holy Spirit thank you for this beloved child of yours be near to them as they sleep bless them with the peace of your presence allowing them to rest deeply in the confidence that comes from knowing you let them fall asleep with joy knowing that you will be walking with them tomorrow just as you were today we trust them to you Lord amen Isaiah 2 5 in the English Standard Version says O house of Jacob come let us walk in the light of the Lord imagine that instead of lying in bed preparing to sleep you are on the beach at sunset taking an evening walk by the water after a long and busy day you take a slow deep breath you feel the kind of peace that only comes from being in nature you make your way through the sand feeling the grainy texture between your toes you wiggle your toes as you walk letting the sand exfoliate your feet you near the water and instantly feel a wave of peace wash over you you hear the water gently crash on the shore and you walk intentionally closer to feel the water crawl up the shore to your feet you take a deep breath appreciating the classic beach smell of the salty water 
the sun is setting, but still feels warm on your skin. Look out over the horizon and take a slow, deep breath. The sun is beginning to set. And you take a moment to appreciate the array of colors scattered across the sky. The bright blue is darkening and hints of purple peek their way through the clouds. As you walk along the shore, you reflect on your life. You think about how God has provided for you and how you are waiting on him to show up in ways that you desperately need. As you reflect on the beauty of life, you see it mirrored in the sky. The setting sun has turned the sky ablaze with colors. The purple swirls into pink, and you see the colors are continuing to change with every moment. What does it mean to walk with God through life? All throughout Scripture, the authors ordained by the Holy Spirit use the imagery of walking with God. And not just walking with Him, but walking with Him in the light. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. You continue your walk along the shore, feeling the cool water wash over your feet every few moments. And you remember your own journey of walking in the light of the Lord. You remember a time when things were hard. The days were long and the nights were restless. You questioned if God was really with you when the burdens were heavy and you felt so alone. And then you remembered the promise of the God who walks with you in every season. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You may have walked through many valleys, or just a few. You may have wandered through the winding path waiting for the ascension back to the mountaintop. Some valleys may have seemed darker than others, making you feel stuck in the shadows. But even in the valleys that went longer and lower than you wanted, the Lord was walking with you. And because the Lord was walking with you, you had no fear of evil. You knew that you had a hedge of protection because the Good Shepherd had not left you alone. The rod and staff are special tools of a shepherd used to guide and protect the flock they are leading. Breathe deeply and feel the comfort of knowing that your shepherd has tools to protect you and he has not left you alone. For even though you walked through the valley of the shadow of death, you had no fear of evil, for God is walking with you, using his rod and staff to comfort you. Oh, beloved of God, come and walk in the light of the Lord. You continue your sunset walk and reflect back on the ways that God has led and directed your path. This path along the beach has but one direction, up and down the shore. But throughout life, you have faced many forks in the road. 
as you think of the ways you have depended on God to walk with you you remember how he has directed your path just as the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 30 21 your ears will hear him right behind you a voice will say this is the way you should go whether to the right or to the left haven't you seen this to be true in your own life when you were unsure when you were desperate for God's leading your own ears heard him and he led and directed you in just the right direction making clear the way you should go what a gift to know that you have a God who walks closely with you through the ups and downs such peace in knowing that he will speak to you and guide you along the right path Oh beloved of God come let us walk in the light of the Lord you're nearing the end of your walk tonight but your walk with God will continue throughout your life and walking with him leads you to take on his character of humility and gentleness you imagine what it would look like to walk in that way tomorrow and the next day how might a patient heart transform you what might love do to shape your relationships with those at work or those in your home or those you interact with in the store or at the park those walking in a manner worthy of their calling see the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace shaping every aspect of their lives let it be true for you too oh beloved of God walk in the light of the Lord the Sun is setting quickly as you watch it near the horizon the pinks and purples have faded and the yellow of the Sun rays have turned the sky an electric orange it's deep in red the colors are striking against the ever darkening blue evening is turning into night and although the darkness is edging out the Sun the light of the Lord does not fade you feel the comfort of his nearness in this moment more than any other though the Sun has set on this day you know it only means another night of rest and another day to wake to new mercies and to walk in the deep fellowship of knowing God of trusting him and of inviting him to walk with you through the joys and sorrows of this precious life Oh beloved of God continue to walk in the light of the Lord remember the promise that God will never leave you nor forsake you he is walking with you father God I give you thanks and praise for the ways that you have faithfully walked with me through the many seasons of my life as I consider your nearness I feel a deep joy and peace in knowing that I am not alone thank you for walking with me thank you for being the light that lights my path ever leading me from one thing to the next 
continue to walk with me to go before me and beside me as I continue through the journey of life thank you Lord amen rest well tonight and wake tomorrow to walk in the light of the Lord I invite you now to relax close your eyes softly get comfortable and allow the presence of the Lord to fill your heart take a slow deep breath as we journey through the mountains and valleys of Psalm 121 to reflect on God's comfort and provision for you remember God loves you and cares for you all the help you'll ever need comes from him allow me to pray over you as you begin to dream and drift into a peaceful night of sleep Lord God I ask you to watch over your child tonight hold them in the fold of your tender loving arms father I pray for deep rest and security for this dear and wonderful person that you love and care for give them visions and dreams of your hope refresh them for a new day be their help in time of need and allow them to sleep deeply tonight in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit amen imagine that you are in a peaceful valley it's lush and green with glorious rolling hills that rise and fall into the distance wildflowers dot the landscape with vibrant color yellow daffodils white jasmine with sweet smelling petals you walk slowly through the valley in perfect peace breathing the fresh spring air up above you see a clear blue sky with wispy clouds floating overhead there is stillness and peace all around you are fully content and fully relaxed in the valley Jesus is there with you he is happy that you want to spend time with him here see the glow of his smile as you walk side by side You hear Jesus speak Psalm 121 out loud to you. The words fill the valley, alive with his spirit. They calm your heart, mind, and soul. I will lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall never slumber nor sleep 
the Lord is your keeper the Lord is your shade at your right hand the Sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night the Lord shall preserve you from all evil he shall preserve your soul The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. You come to a soft blanket spread out for you in the shade. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. And Jesus invite you to rest right here and you lie dreamily in the valley the Lord is your keeper he who keeps you will not slumber he keeps Israel safe and he will keep you safe He will neither sleep nor slumber. Your heart fills with the comfort that God is your keeper, your protector, your guide. His spirit fills your room. He shall preserve you from all evil. You fall. You drift slowly softly asleep your mind is refreshed your arms and back feel light and restored from deep sleep Jesus walks again with you through the valley He continues speaking Psalm 121 over you slowly, like a command, making each word true. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? As you walk through the beautiful green valley, the gentle rolling hills rising up all around you you know where your help comes from he is standing right beside you in glowing robes <laughs> the risen Lord he is so peaceful you are immersed in a sense of stillness and security As you look around at the magnificent landscape, you know just by the beauty of creation that God is your creator, your provider, your help. You also know that the psalmist does not look to nature for help. As beautiful as the hills may be, the psalmist's help comes from the very one who made the hills the heavens and the earth God my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth the Lord God is with you in the valley God the Father calls out to you from the hills your heart rejoices at his voice you call out to him and before a word is even on your tongue he knows it he is already sending the help you need at just the right time
and in just the right way he will not let your foot be moved he who keeps you will not slumber behold he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep you are amazed by the faithfulness of God the one who does not slumber or sleep he never grows weary of that you can be sure he is a constant presence in your life you feel his presence now your feet are steady on solid ground you have nothing to fear the Lord is your keeper the Lord is your shade on your right hand the Sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night the warmth of the Sun is shining down on you and you bask in its light and when it becomes too hot God becomes your shade the coolness on your face he is your keeper and guardian you allow yourself to relax fully in his loving arms he is guiding you in the way you should go even in the night watches when the way seems dark and unfamiliar your foot does not stumble his spirit is there to lead you feel him leading you tonight no matter how dark it seems your footsteps are sure the Lord will keep you from all evil he will keep your life the safety you feel in the fold of the Lord's loving arms is the most secure feeling in the world all the cares of life have faded into the night you are able to breathe deeply and know that you are completely safe no evil can touch you for the Lord is keeping you from everything that is harmful or contrary to his love for you your very life is held fastly in the palm of his hand you've never felt so protected it's as if walls of love have been placed around you so that nothing can reach you you are surrounded by God's perfect peace the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever more as you go through the valley and find pasture your life is locked in and secured in the fold of the great Shepherd he watches over your coming and your going there is nothing that escapes his sovereignty he is your keeper he keeps watch over you from this time forth now and forevermore tomorrow God will watch over you he will guide your steps the peace of Jesus will guard your heart 
from this time forth and forevermore you are kept by the love of the Lord he is your help in time of need he is your rock your fortress and your deliverer now be still rest deeply and know that God is with you allow his presence to cover you as you sleep in total peace tonight dream peacefully as I pray gracious God thank you for your provision over your loved one tonight I ask for healing rest and peaceful sleep as they trust in you help them always to remember that their help comes from you alone in Jesus' holy name I pray amen may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace I feel like when I listen to the sleep meditations that I have a friend next to me